Good evening, everyone. I apologize for the uh, slightly late start. Um, I'm Peter Hood. I'm the chairman of the select board. Recording I think in progress. Most of you uh, know me. Uh, this is a regular select board meeting, but it's also a uh, public meeting on the uh, town hall renovation plans. Um, we're a little challenged because the person from the architecture firm is not here yet, and uh, Vic Dwyer, our highway commissioner, is not here yet. So what I'm going to suggest is we'll go through the uh, introductory process and the uh, amending of the agenda if we need to, and then go to the treasurer's report if that works for you, Dorinda, till we get the rest of the cast of characters here. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I would, I would mention before we go any further is our normal process is to have every guest at the meeting introduce themselves. Rather than do that tonight when we have so many people here, I would just ask if you'd like to be recognized or like to speak on any of these topics, just state your name when you get up to speak. That will help, uh, help Sarah with the, uh, with the minutes. Um, the other thing I would say is for the people sitting in back of me, I'll try and pay attention if you're waving your hand, but if I don't see you, just maybe walk around the corner and wave your hand so I recognize you. I don't mean to exclude anybody, but I think it's better for you to be back there. Um, uh, so uh, the first item we need to consider, and we do have uh, a quorum of the select board now, is approving the minutes of the September 19th 2023 regular select board meeting and the September 20th, 2023 emergency meeting. Uh, is there a motion? Oh, I'll, I'll move. Yeah. Uh, Let me approve the minutes. Is were you both at both meetings? I'm trying to think about the emergency meeting. <laughs> uh, you were not at the emergency I was not meeting. at the emergency so meeting, we so we can't do that one. So we can't do that one. We need to okay, defer that one. So your motion is for the regular select board meeting on September 20th, yep. right? And, I can and you second it. I can second that. Randy, you were, you were here. Was I on the 20th? That's, I was just trying to figure yeah, that out. You're recording the bids for uh, East Hill. Uh, that was oh, that was. OK, so yes. yes. OK, uh, you were here. I'll, I'll second both OK, so the, so the motion is to approve the minutes for both meetings. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Um, we need to review and amend the agenda uh, for tonight's meeting. And the only uh, addition I have to the agenda under other business is a brief report about Welch Park. Uh, does anyone else have any amendments to the agenda? I have amendments. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we need to add uh, a, perhaps issuing a letter of dog ordinance violation to owners of dogs on East Hill and French Roads. Yep. Got it. French Road. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I'm with the U.S. Small Business Administration. I just wanted to mention that um, I was um, hoping to be able to speak under the um, other business section. Okay. And and oh, what's your? Right. No, that's fine. Um, okay. What's your What's your topic? As if I didn't know. <laughs> right. It's right. Regarding the um, SBA's disaster loan program. Okay. Just a reminder to the public. Okay. The Thank board. you. Okay. Okay. So I move we approve the agenda for tonight. Okay. Is there a second? Randy? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We've approved the agenda. Okay. And um, Vermont Integrated Architects is here. Yeah. Where is she? Uh, Megan's there. And Hi, Megan. So well, I'm going why to. Don't you, yeah, why she's don't going you, to come here. I'm going to present, and she's going to come in the presentation. Okay. At some perfect. point. So I'm going to start it out, and then. Um, so come on down, as they say. Come on down. On the price is right. Price is ready. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Barker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming tonight. I'm Liz Sharf. Um, I'm a select board member, and I have 
sort of been on this town hall committee as well. I'm here um, with Vermont Integrated Architecture um, architect, <laughs> Megan, um, and we also have um, Dave Megida, who is has been on the town hall committee as well. Um, the other person who's not here tonight is Sandy Levine, who has been um, helping out in this process. So we're going to take you through a short little presentation and then kind of get to the the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of, um, of the work that VIA did. But I'm going to sort of lead us as to why, why we're here today. Um, so um, why Town Hall, why now? So back in 2020, you'll see also I've used some um, acronyms that will be used throughout the presentation. Um, but don't hesitate to shout out, what does that mean again? Um, because there's lots of acronyms. Um, so in 2020, that was the town meeting that we had right before COVID, if you recall. <laughs> and um, there was a lot of chatter about, wow, you know, we've got a big grader coming in. Um, we've got problems with the town hall. We've got these bigger expenses coming in. Um, we'd really like to uh, have a better sense as a public um, what we can expect to come down the road. Um, so. Um, so we decided to embark on what's called a capital improvement plan, um, and we applied for a municipal planning grant um, through Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and we were awarded that grant. Um, and then in early um, 2022, um, that plan was completed, and it's now used regularly by the Middlesex Budget Committee, and Randy is on the Budget Committee, and occasionally, you know, if we have questions about when does this truck need to be repaired, he just brings it right up out of the CIP. Replaced. Replaced. Um, or, <laughs> replaced. They right. need to be repaired all the time. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, and so I think I'm just going to stand up so I can see you guys a little better. So the town hall was then identified um, as a high priority line because when we were going through and talking with all of the people um, who had a stake in what are called our capital um, uh, items like buildings and equipment, um, the town hall was identified as a priority item for things that you know were going to cost us money down the road. Um, so this, what what did we already know about the town hall? Um, so I was looking back at some of the uh, town um, those uh, what are they called, Sarah? The the things that you the reports, right? Yeah. Literally um, during June Lakin's time, there was a whole section about. Uh, the need to have a new town hall, right? And that was like 20 plus years ago because of all the problems that it had that we really have not worked on toward, um, toward resolving. Um, and we know that the radon levels have exceeded safe levels inside the vault, that the vault is overcrowded. Let me just take this down so you can see some of the pictures. Um, I guess you can't see them. I guess that doesn't come down on there for some reason. Anyway, um, the, uh, the vault is overcrowded. That's a picture of Sarah there um, with uh, a vault that can no longer hold anything um, because it's filled up. Um, there are plumbing issues which prevent us having larger gatherings. We used to have events here like town meeting and such, but we really can't do that anymore. Um, it's not ADA compatible or compliant, I should say, there right now. It's not compliant. Um, you'll see some pictures that show that. Um, but, our, but our lift often breaks down. Um, it gets, it's hard to repair. And even getting a wheelchair in, you can't because there's like, you know, there's um, the pavement and such just doesn't allow for people to safely go, go in and out on their own. Um, the building is drafty and not weatherized, um, and our heating system um, literally can no longer be serviced with replacement parts. It's so old. Um, and then the electrical systems are outdated and at capacity, and really this space, as we know it, we've got this big space here, and it's just not very conducive for smaller gatherings or small office for privacy, um, and the Town Historical Society has really expressed an interest in having some space where they could display things and and make it more of like a, a, a place where people want to come and, and spend time or have meetings and visit and feel like they can talk with town hall staff and have some privacy. Um, so there is our town hall today. I'd really like to be able to get rid of this little thing. I'm not sure how. Maybe if I move it? I don't know. Do you have control? Can control. you shrink it? Are you the host? I, uh, no. So the host can grab it and move it over to the other side if you want oh. and minimize it. Can you do that, Eric? 
I think if you can minimize the uh, <laughs> attendant attendant picture. Yeah, yes. that thing there. Yeah. This thing? Yeah. That's what I just did. Just okay, yeah, that, that's, that's perfect. perfect. Yep. Um, so this is our town hall today. I mentioned you'll see like the, it's hard to get in. That's the door that takes you to the elevator from the outside. That's our um, worn old heating system. These are our windows, as you can see. They're just sort of old-fashioned windows. And just some of the um, spaces that we would be looking at um, modernizing and making more efficient for the, for the staff. Um, so in, in short, really, there's a lot, um, and this is how Dave, uh, Dave put it, Dave Makita, that the reliability cannot be guaranteed on these major things, like our heating system, our electrical, our septic, and our ADA compliance. Um, so what we did next is in the fall of 2022, we applied for another municipal planning grant for the Middlesex Town Hall Architectural Study. So we advertised in a request for proposal for the study. We received five to six bids from architect firms, um, narrowed it down to two, interviewed both of them. Um, this was our subcommittee. It says, who's we anyway? So that was me, Liz Scharf, Sandy Levine, um, Dave, uh, Dave Magida and Sarah Merriman. And Dave came on um, as sort of our expert. I reached out to him before we even did this um, because we knew we were going to want to partake in this. Um, Dave has experience as a, um, say what it is, Dave. Facility. Chief Administrative Officer. Chief Administrative Officer at Norwich um, University. So he dealt a lot with facilities and new buildings, and he understands the process of what it takes to start um, to either renovate a building or to to put in like a new building and the costs and what to expect. So his knowledge has been has been key to this whole process because we have someone who actually understands a lot of this language and things that someone like a lay person like me may not um, as much um, when we're working with like um, VIA, right? Dave can sort of interpret some of that stuff and that's really helpful. Um, so we received the muni municipal planning grant that covered most of the cost of the town hall study. Um, and we also at that time conducted a townwide survey with 243 responses, which is a really strong response for a town like Middlesex, um, including hundreds of comments about the town hall. Um, and then in February 2023, so this calendar year was our first meeting um, with VIA. We also had in the very beginning some other interested parties that included the Energy Committee, who we have a couple of representatives from here today, um, and the Historical Society. We've got two representatives from um, there as well. Um, and then we also really involved a lot of the town hall employees because they're the people who are here every day. They're the people who use this space. So we really included um, a lot of feedback from, from them when VIA was working with them. They, they were like the, the, peop, the go to people because they had the most at stake. Um, so the overall work, um, scope of work for VIA um, was we asked them in our RFP to come up with um, sort of three scenarios, renovating the existing town hall, um, renovating and adding an addition to the town hall, or building a new town hall at a new site. So I'm not going to go through what the scope of work is, but this is essentially from February to today. And where we are right now is number 12, present the final feasibility study to the community at the town hall meeting. So between the original kickoff meeting with them, there was a lot of other stuff that happened. They came here. Um, they did you know, research on the building. Um, they, um, they, we, we met with them um, as a committee in various sort of smaller meetings. Um, and, um, and then uh, sh we have Megan here. Um, I think this is where we are right now. Oh, this was, I took that out. But there is a kind of cool, they came in and did a 3D scan of the building to really get a sense of the size and shape so they could get the real measurements of the building without having to like pull out a tape measure. I think that's what that does, doesn't it? Yeah, it gets, a, it gets the real footprint of, of the building. Um, and so before Megan takes over, um, what, we, what we're going to show you tonight is the town hall renovation. So the committee and the town employees met with VIA, and we all agreed that a renovation would meet all the requirements and code issues, um, and it would be the most affordable option, um, and that even with the addition, we didn't see a value add to it. So we're really looking at how can we present to the town uh, the town people, you, the voters, um, a responsible, 
um, an energy efficient building that um, meets the needs of the employees, meets the needs of the community, um, and is in you know the 21st century and built to last for the next how many years, Dave? 50 years before we have to worry about this again, <laughs> right? Um, so what we are going to see um, next is we're going to hear from Megan, um, who she and her team um, really uh, worked on um, what she's going to explain to you right now. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Okay, great. Uh, I'm Megan Nizinski. I'm a partner and a project architect with Vermont Integrated Architecture. Uh, we are very excited to have had the opportunity to mark, work with your committee. Um, and really were, I have to say, kind of blown away and impressed by the response of the community survey. We often do community surveys with groups and your response from the community was really sort of knocked it out of the park. So you've, it's pretty exciting to work with such an engaged community. So thank you for that. Um, so when we started, Liz already hit on some of these, but uh, our, our main goals for the project, one was to address the uh, deficiencies and then another section of our goals for this feasibility study was to assess programmatically and operationally what does the town need. And so Liz hit on this, could we meet it in the existing building, would an addition be required, or does it make more sense to move somewhere else? So we did study that, we did review of an existing conditions, we reviewed prior assessments and reports and existing materials. Um, and so in addressing the deficiencies, it was mechanical, it was the accessibility items, water migration into the building, especially in the back rear corner here at the lift, uh, radon, which Liz mentioned, and then energy efficiency. Um, when we took a look at the functionality, we really took a deep dive with the various stakeholder groups looking at your community survey and then with also the staff, uh, and we developed what we call a program. And so the space program is kind of a laundry list of square footages and space needs throughout that basically say, you know, we need this many seats for um, recording and we need this many seats for office staff and like this is the about the size of a meeting area so we worked through that and then in our early concepts we did develop multiple concepts and we found that we were actually able to meet in the existing footprint all of those needs um, for both now but then moving into the future we did look at an option that did put an addition off to this side and uh, to be honest it was adding cost and not really achieving much else for us so we then pivoted to developing uh, this renovation plan so what you see here um, on the screen is a site plan and so uh, I'm gonna call north up on the page you can see the north arrow in the lower right hand corner um, but I'm gonna refer to uh, Project North as sort of up on the page. So this is the existing town hall. Um, you can see it's a reorganization of parking uh, to the east and over by the existing garage. And we have a one-way circulation path that's coming in front of the building and east around the rear of the building and then circulating back out onto the street. Um, and the primary reason for doing this, you can notice that we've introduced accessible parking sort of um, towards the rear of the building, just over here on the site. And what we're doing um, on this east facade of the building is actually raising grade. And so this uh, sort of semicircular path that's coming down from that accessible parking into the front door is just that. It's an accessible route. So someone uh, could come, and if they have uh, mobility, um, issues, they would be able to park in this accessible parking, get on um, the sidewalk, migrate down to the entrance of the building. So the most meaningful change to the exterior of the building architecturally is the removal of the front stairs. And so we have a very small addition, uh, which is that little blue box on the front, which creates a new at-grade entry down there. So it's a, a glassy enclosure. It's what we call an energy vestibule. So it allows for folks to come in, sort of knock the snow off and mud off your boots, and then be able to migrate in. And it uh, has two doors in it, and so it helps with energy efficiency and comfort on the inside of the building. And so that area in the front of the town hall here is depressed. And so we tried to create a little plaza, so it might be like for voting. Uh, there might be folks out there sort of 
handing out flyers. It's also a community opportunity um, and also an opportunity to, to gather or sit and to, to meet other folks in the town. So that's what the little plaza is. You can also circulate around the front of the building. There's a small set of stairs that then access on the west side of the building, um, a sidewalk along the row of parking, and uh, towards the southwest corner there, uh, we did include a, a spot for uh, electric vehicle charging. Um, so uh, from the site, then we can move to the next slide, which shows kind of the overall of the floor plan. Maybe invite. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Great. Okay. So here are the two floor plans of the proposed renovations uh, to the building. On the on the left side is the lower level um, renovated uh, area of the lower level. So getting back to just kind of high level, the goals uh, that I started with. So f f on mechanical. For mechanical systems, it is a replacement, it is removal of all of the mechanical systems in the building and replacing those with an all-electric fossil fuel-free system. So that would be air source heat pump system with um, baseboard backup heat um, for that. And a high efficiency energy recovery ventilator, which is bringing fresh air into the building and it's highly efficient. Um, and so it's healthier indoor air quality uh, for inhabit for uh, folks working in the space and utilizing the space. Um, and with the addition of the air source heat pump also brings the opportunity for cooling. And so it offers the opportunity that as we see these warmer days, uh, Town Hall could be a cooling center for the community, which um, we heard as a potential opportunity or need um, for residents of the community. For plumbing, I'll, I'll get into sort of the nitty gritty of the, the plans a little bit more, but for plumbing, it's a full replacement of new supply and waste, and then a replacement of all fixtures throughout, so low flow plumbing fixtures, so also reaching for improved efficiency there and improved health um, for those various systems. Electrical, it would be new distribution. I already mentioned the EV charging. Um, new fire alarm system for life safety, and also new LED lighting um, throughout. Um, for accessibility, we are including um, a new lift. And so if you look at the, the left plan, the, the plan on the left is the lower level. And so again, if we start sort of at the top of the page, it's okay. There you go. There you go. We start at the top of the page. You can see those, those two doors that are on the, the, the right and the left of that vestibule. That is how you could enter the building, which we reviewed in the site plan. So then coming into the entry, there's an option that you can go up the stairs to this level where we are now, or you could proceed down the hall. And the lift is just down the hall um, at the end of the hallway. Uh, so if you needed to go upstairs, that would be your means to get there. Um, and then if you're coming in that hall and um, you move into where the, the current clerk's desk is downstairs, it would be repurposed as a work area. And so this is a small meeting room. Uh, the vault stays where it is. Radon would be addressed within um, that area. And we included a second vault, which we'll see sort of further south in the building to uh, address that issue of uh, greater capacity. So then as far as the layout down here, there's an open office space sort of on the, the middle, sort of right side of the floor plan here, the clerk financial. And so this would be where the town clerk would be. Do you uh, have a laser pointer? New window? I do not. Okay. I, can, I can point with the. I could. Yeah. Do you have the cursor on there? Or uh, oh, else? yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah, Or yeah. I could point on yeah, the screen, but then people on. Yeah, why don't you point okay. um, with your, with the with cursor. My, Okay, so clerk financial area here. So this is open, um, new windows in this area. And so by those grading changes on the exterior, we're able to expand the windows down there so to bring more natural light in so that lower level wouldn't be so dark and um, 
with all of this uh, clerk financial area here being open, it would make the whole level feel much more um, open and inviting. So then we have two offices here. There's a recording room with copier in it. Um, and then over here, there's the listers in the planning and zoning office. And then further down the page, um, this is the drinking fountain. Here is the second vault for the increased capacity. Um, there is storage here that is accessible off the listers and planning and zoning, so that would be uh, storage to support their needs. Um, new accessible uh, water closet here. Um, you'll notice that we're sealing off. This is the existing door to the vault that has the water intrusion issues. So we're sealing that off and weatherizing that to be able to treat and deal with the water intrusion issues there. We do have a new sort of water closet, if you will, for utilities on the outside so that the um, water tanks could be moved into that space. Secondary stair that goes upstairs. We've got server and electrical. So then moving upstairs. Oops. Okay, I'm going to again start sort of at the top of the page here. So as if you came in the front door downstairs and you came up the stairs here and you come around the corner, there's a lounge or seating area. Um, and then the, the existing door that goes out would remain for historic purposes but would not be operational or functional out there, but it's more a, um, a response to the historic fabric of the building. Then moving into this area, we created uh, sort of like a four chamber and ante space. And this is where we were thinking could be display space for the um, historic um, historical society. So displays on either side. And also um, we did alternate layouts of furniture to show that in a layout of voting, if folks came in, they'd register and sort of check in here and then could move through this space where the voting was and back out. Um, there's also the addition of a small meeting room in the corner here and a closet. And then you'll see that we've really tried to maintain this space as much as possible as a large meeting room. And so we have it shown in this layout as a lecture style, but we also did um, multiple layouts to show how it could function for voting um, purposes for meetings such as this one or for a large sort of public event. In the back, there's a small kitchenette. Um, another water closet uh, with a small janitor's closet off of it, another storage closet here, existing stairs remain down to the uh, lower level and storage here. There is, a, over this whole zone is a um, mechanical mezzanine. So up here we have high ceiling space, um, but it's within the thermal envelope and so that's where the ERV uh, fan coil unit um, the ERV, sorry, not the fan coil unit. The ERV would be located. Um, so from an energy perspective, uh, we also are, all the windows on the lower level would be replaced with new triple glaze windows. The windows on this level, um, the base case was restoring the existing historic windows and then having a historic storm added to the exterior to improve that energy efficiency. We carried that as a base bid and we also priced it as an add alternate to replace all the windows. And so allowing some flexibility as we move into future design phases to assess you know, where the greatest value is. Um, and so the envelope uh, for both levels would be opening up the walls, re-insulating them, and building a wall to the interior to uh, increase the insulation level and also improve the air sealing. And I think that's, that's all I've got for now. You want to? And the lift, can you clarify, that's just like one of those, it's not like an elevator, right? It's like a thing that, um, it's, or is It's it? similar to this. It's, okay. Yeah, it's, so it's it's a lift, it's a, a Lula limited use limited access. Um, so it's not like a full elevator, it's a, it's a smaller, more, it feels more scale appropriate for this um, size a lot building. more reliable than what we have now. <laughs> yes. yes, the technology has, has improved. Um, and I think also, you know, where the lift is placed now also allows, I mean, currently someone who visits the facility needs to have access or needs to somehow contact someone that they could come out and meet them, which is not necessarily meeting the intent of the ADA law. And so in this case, someone would be able to arrive at the site themselves migrate, you know, move down into the main entry, move into the front door, get themselves into the lift, move upstairs, 
And another thing related to that, the way that we've arranged the doors on the two levels related to security does allow for multi-functional. Um, you could have an after hours event sort of up here where the lower level could be locked out or vice versa, this could be locked out and just the lower level could be open. Um, but that was a main intent for us with the location of the lift was to keep it interior and to also allow for someone to be able to move about on their own. And I forgot to mention, but we do over here have a very small uh, food pantry closet um, right there that would be accessible from the exterior. One of the things that people have talked about is, you know, after we had had a food shelf here for many, many years in Middlesex at the church, and then during COVID, um, people stopped using it because people just weren't going anyplace, and it was hard to get volunteers. So we shut the food shelf down sort of as a temporary measure, and then the place burned. So, you know, we don't actually have a food shelf space, and so this gives us a little opportunity for something like an essentials closet if someone needed to come in and get things you know that like you know canned food or toiletries or things like that that um, potentially that could be done and whether and that's just down the road but they put that spot in there um, so we we don't know yet I mean uh, we you, haven't even I'm gotten sorry that if, if you're gonna speak could you could you raise your hand and also could you identify yourself please I can, sorry. Thank you. So Marge, that remains to be seen, but we wanted to put something in there um, as a sort of a placekeeper to have some space in case we wanted to have a, a, food, a small food pantry for the public. Um, so we still, so I have a couple more slides that talk about the big question that people have, which is, you know, how would we pay for this? How much is this gonna cost? Um, and, um, and sort of next steps in this process. Um, so I don't know if I should just finish with that, or does someone have specific questions around the design that we should ask? Yeah, let's, let's see if there are questions while we have the plans open. Okay. okay. Any questions, anyone? Yes. Um, my name is Chris McVeigh, and is there any concern about flooding in the lower levels in terms of locating the mechanical room down there since we've had the unfortunate experience in the locale of two pretty significant flooding events? Or are we high up enough that it's not really a concern? Um, so ask that question of the, the civil engineer, sort of, um, and our understanding of the, the flood and the water intrusion issues back here are more related to groundwater rather than surface water and surface flooding due to the grade of land. And so we do not believe that that is an, an issue or a concern. But for the mechanicals that are down there, um, the air source, the exterior air source units are actually proposed to be mounted on the wall on the outside here. There's the portico that you kind of go in to access the lift right now. They are mounted high up on the wall. So they, if we ever did get floodwaters up there, they would be high up out of that. And then the ERV system is all up here. So that's also high and up. So the um, Infrastructure that would be down there that would potentially be at risk would be uh, furnishings and any of uh, finishes down there. Uh, the server, which I think we have ample space for the server, so I think racking of that to keep it high off the floor. I mean, we're recommending to all clients that let's not put things on the ground anymore. Let's you know mount them up as high as possible. So we, we are paying attention to that, but we think the specific issues here related to grading is um, more groundwater uh, rather than sort of floodwaters. I don't believe, Chris, that this building was even impacted in the 1947 flood. It's up high enough. But Over who knows what's coming? Was, you know, <laughs> but this, as far as I know, <laughs> Sarah, do you have any knowledge about that or anyone else? But I don't believe this building has ever been impacted by flood that we know of. <laughs> Other questions, anyone? I have a question and that goes along with Chris's question for flooding, actually. Patty I'm sorry. Wiley. Yeah. Patty Wiley. Thank you, Patty. Um, so the, the vault areas, which I'm assuming will still hold the, the old land records and town records, will that have any additional like flood kind of protection areas? Like when that vault closes off, would, would that area 
be able to stay a little bit drier than the outer area? It's a possibility that we could look into, and I can share a couple things that we're doing with other projects that are in flood prone areas. At this stage in the game, we are budget building and sort of feasibility um, investigating. So I would say that we didn't necessarily go to that level. Um, but I would think in the next phase of design, as we're continuing to investigate, we would review those even further to make more detailed recommendations. One easy um, sort of precaution that can be put into place is, you know, they're, they're called floodgates and they're removable pieces that it's essentially expandable. And so we, you know, they're a few hundred dollars and you could purchase those and have them sort of stowed in one of these storage areas. And if there was a risk of flooding, you could bring it in and those could be put in the vault doors. You know, some places actually put them in, you know, windows that, so even as the precaution to help prevent against having to replace carpeting or things like that. But again, I do think elevation is on our side here, um, but we don't know what's coming in the future, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. The only other thing I guess I would suggest in looking at this mm -hmm. is that we just consider finding a space for the computer server up here rather than down sure. there. Sure, sure. Randy had a question and then Mark yeah, I'm sorry. a question. Um, just wondering if uh, backup power generation is considered in this design at all? Um, we do not have generator or um, battery included currently, but it is definitely something that could be carried as an allowance in the future and developed uh, to move forward. Yeah, I mean, I think with, with the different events that we're going to be experiencing in the future and, and whatnot, using, you know, having places for residents to go and extended power outages, um, something that we should all be thinking about. It was something that we discussed a fair amount as a committee, and there are different levels of sort of resilience there and sort of what we're trying to respond to. And so I know we talked about, you know, if we're going to do backup power and generator power, there is a level that would essentially keep lights on and allow for people to show up and kind of do business, and that is sort of a, a lower level. If we elevate to the level of being sort of an emergency shelter or one of, then there are other additional parameters that go along with that. Um, so it's a more robust system, it's a more expensive system. And I think where we left it with the committee was that may be something to consider and to evaluate as we develop it further. And we should, as we're evaluating that value, also ask ourselves the question of, is this the place for that? And how many could this house? Or would there be another place? So I think it's, an, it's a really good open question and one that's been touched on, um, but would be probably um, developed further. Yes, as an additional so. idea about that. So we have a kitchenette in the building. We're going to have a generator. This gets to exactly what you were talking about. We ought to find space for at least a small shower that people are going to be standing in. Well, that, that's if we turn it into a shelter. Because Rumney, is, is Rumney a shelter? Yeah, Rumney has showers and things like that. No, I understand. But I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, to Megan's question of how far do we go, uh, that's just something else to think about. Yeah, it seems like a, a balance there of yeah. the investment of what it would take to get us to that level in this yeah. facility. And we also it's, potentially at the fire station. Well, uh, is that a priority? Yeah. Yeah, Sarah. I think one of the things we discussed is that we cannot get around our really crappy sewer system. We cannot accommodate it. It just simply will not accommodate a shelter, period. Unless you want to build a mound for the fire station. Seriously. Well, I think that, that was going to be another question for me is, is we have a very marginal water system and a very marginal sewer system. Uh, is there anything in this to redo that? I think that's important. We've been suffering with that for a long time. Um, I believe we, we have an allowance to replace the, or we have an alternate to replace the leach field. And looking at sort of looking at the uses that are currently here and how, and the upgrades that we're making we opted to make that as an alternate so that we could assess cost overall project feasibility. Um, if money is available and if that is affordable, then I think that is something to pursue. But I think our feeling was there are a variety of facilities just like this one in a variety of communities around. They're historic facilities. And so when you have a larger event, they're often pumping. 
uh, right before that event to sort of address their septic issue. So if somebody was going to rent the hall for something, they would do that. So there's, I think, a strategic question for the town moving ahead. Um, do we want to invest in this or would we be, do we feel that it's appropriate to do it, handle it operationally with this pumping? And it could also be something like, well, let's bite off this first, see how we're using it, and then in the future we could upgrade the septic. So we're trying to leave lots of options open, um, knowing that there's immediate needs, but then also, you know, understanding construction costs over time and really kind of wanting to be able to deliver and allow some flexibility so that the town can make informed priorities. And my other question is, as a public building, is this building going to need to be sprinkler? When this, we, and if so, how do we do that? Uh, this building does not require a sprinkler system because of its use and its size. We did uh, also get at alternate pricing for a sprinkler system, a uh, water supply, and a fire pump. Um, it's a very big number. <laughs> yeah, um, so we, we got that information. I think as the design team, we said, you're not going to do this because you're not going to like the price, um, and nor is it required. Okay. Um, well, that's and, important. That's right. an important piece. And so the I other think thing we, I would just I would just mention for the record is we are in the very 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 initial phases of exploring a municipal water system in the village. So right. if all of a sudden we add the municipal water system, then all of a sudden the sprinkler system isn't such an unbelievable thing. Very so true. So it's something to keep an eye on. I don't right. know how far that's going to go. Right. Anyone. Lowry had a question. Yep, Lowry. Uh, yeah, thanks, Lowry Sharp. Um, so would the mechanical ventilation system take care of the radon issue? It would not. There would be a separate radon mitigation, and in this initial feasibility, we did not um, have the testing or the assessment, and so we've we've gone from the information that was shared with us about what we know historically about this. So our recommendation for the next phase was to do more testing, gather better information so that we could design um, what that system is to address the radon in the vault. Um, but we, we would recommend that the radon be mitigated independently and not relying on the mechanical system. That would be sort of a, a secondary assist. But to be clear, that scope is isolated to the vault, the radon mitigation scope. The radon mitigation, our recommendation would be if you're getting somebody out here to do the assessment, let's have them go ahead while they're here, have them test the lower level so that we can fully understand what is, what the levels are. I mean, there's a variety of sub slab work that needs to occur downstairs for new footings for posts. Uh, the new vault back here actually has to be excavated so that it could have its, you know, foot thick slab underneath it. So there's a fair amount of disturbance to the slab that needs to happen. So I think we'd want to be armed with this information first of what are the radon levels and so that when we're opening up that slab, we could say, okay, well, let's go ahead and put something in here or while we're cutting slab, let's cut a little more and do the right thing. Um, so I think we should assess the whole level. And just to follow up, so the radon issue is a priority, I, I understand. So there would probably be some significant cost in addition once that exploration is done to, to mitigate the radon. So whatever is proposed here doesn't include that. Uh, so I assume it's some, you know, could be a sizable number. That's correct. It's not included currently. Um, Remember, if we included a line item on owner's cost, um, you did. It's like a, it's not. It's not at the bottom. The owner's cost looks like. My ex my experience with radon mitigation in Vermont is that it typically is not that horrendous. I mean, probably what it would be is some yeah, penetrations right through the concrete, maybe some pipe being under the concrete, and then exhaust fans. So, so you know, might it could it be ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars? I'm sure it could, but it wouldn't be. Wouldn't be like the sprinkler system, let's put it that way. So what we've done is in addition to the cost estimate for the bricks and mortar, we also worked with the committee to outline sort of like here, like the bricks and mortar piece of it is one thing that you pay for. Of course, there's the architects, the engineers, and then there's a whole slew of owner's costs, things like permitting. And so uh, testing uh, that occurs uh, during construction 
in those owner's costs, we also have line items carried there as recommendations and placeholders to help with this budgetary planning. So we do have a line item for the assessment, and then we have a placeholder for what that radon would be. So it's not in the cost estimate, but it is sort of budgeted for. And I would echo and agree with that a lot of these mitigation measures, most typically that we see, it could be as simple as a perforated pipe in the stone layer underneath the slab, and as long as it's got a negative path out, you know, in few cases, they actually require like an inline fan or something like that. So I think in order to understand the magnitude of the issue that we have here, that's gonna help us un design that system. But I, I don't think it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So um, is there anything that um, is being done in the building that would um, have an impact if the sewage issue was to be addressed later that would make it easier or harder uh, to do that in phases? Even though um, we don't know what that sewage issue will be in the future, but just is there going to be any changes that could be done to make it easier if that is going to be addressed in the spring? Um, I don't think so, but I think it's something that we would investigate in a future phase related to all the site work that we're doing out here. I think that would be something that we'd investigate with our civil team and looking at the inverts and the elevations of does it make sense to replace a line while we're doing that work so that we're all set up for that. In a similar vein, I would say, depending on how this project progresses and how the potential for water coming to the site also progresses, it may make good sense for us to have a stub or a line or something out there that it's like, okay, we've got provision in place that when water comes and if we want to add a sprinkler in the future or put this on town water, there. so I think those are things that we would continue to investigate in, in a future phase. Um, I believe we have two currently in the plan. Is there also then going to be capacity for future ones already built into the project? If there, it seems like the trend is moving forward. Yeah, I think I think there's a possibility for that, and I think it uh, then uh, relates back to the electrical service for the building. And so I think we're at a balance point of you know upgrading electrical service or not, and where is that sweet spot? So I think those are the value add detailed questions that we would continue to investigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, Dave, when we were looking at this plan and Megan, um, we weren't looking to like have town meeting here, right? We never wanted to expand this to be able to house more than, I think it was 40 people maybe you said, yep. something like that. So, you know, we're looking at community meetings, meetings like this, right? Someone maybe having a small, like, get-together or something like that and renting the town hall, but not to, like, bring 200 people in. Um, and, you know, in terms of things like if people wanted to rent it for an event, they could also rent the portalette or something, or like you said, drain the, the septic before they, right, before they had an event. Um, any more questions for Megan before I move into the um, sort of some ideas on how to fund this yeah I guess I would have an extra question so um, this is is still in early stages mm -hmm. right so is, is the next step for sort of fine-tuning would be to continue to work with the, the committee um, Liz and I'm thinking in particular of like just like display cases and mm -hmm. you know, yeah storage that so that's there. like a next and what what do you call that Dave it's uh, like design development, design development okay. phase okay. yeah Love them, Historic Society, both of you, and I'm saying media, there are opportunities along the way for public to be involved that you need public to be involved. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. So here's the big, uh, the big sticker price, and this is in today's dollars, and we know that prices are ch change rapidly. Right, um, I mean, they they go up, all right. They don't go down, and they're and and so um, really, we we landed on renovation one because um, you know as part of our town plan, one of the, the when when you as townspeople pass the town plan, um, it's to keep you know uh, have a, have this village be a municipal center. So um, that means where our government is, and so keeping the town hall 
here also um, adheres to the town plan. And it's, it's uh, cheaper um, in terms of the actual you know, square footage cost, new construction to renovation. Um, you'll see that these two, uh, you'll see the asterisk down there on the 2.5 million. It does not account for the sale of the property or purchase of new land um, to put a different uh, building on. Um, so two million dollars, right? It, that's today. So you know we might say two point five million, right? And so um, so we did actually sort of think about it in terms of like let's just throw out the number two point five million, right? So right now um, there's some important funding that's available that is sort of once in a lifetime funding um, that is uh, from the federal government, and it's the Municipal Energy Resilience Program. Where municipalities can pay can can apply for grants for up to five hundred thousand for existing buildings. This was another reason why we thought renovation made more sense because there's funding available that wouldn't otherwise be available for new buildings. Um, and and this this funding is very time sensitive. Um, I I have it on a different file on my computer here if anyone wants to know later. Um, but essentially. Um, this funding is going to open up in early 2024. Um, and we are in the process right now of working with uh, the first phase of this funding, which means that we are having a, a level two, I guess, energy assessment of our town hall and our fire department. That is a free thing, but we have to do it before we apply for MERC funding. Um, and so that hasn't been scheduled yet, but we will have someone come in and do a comprehensive study of our um, heating system and how things are set up for weatherization and then give us a recommendation of what to do next. They're gonna do that for the fire department as well, which also needs a new heating system. Um, they, um, so, so this funding, if we want to, if, if we as a town decide that we're going to renovate this building, this funding will be crucial to cover the costs of things like weatherizing the building, potentially putting in those, you know, windows downstairs, heating systems, right? It, in, I think that 500000 could be spent very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it is sort of a first come, first serve. So, like, the sooner we do it, the more likely we're going to get more of that funding. Um, I forget how many millions they have available, but they don't have five hundred for every town in Vermont. Um, the other thing is the aid, there are ADA grants um, for fixing your elevators or getting new elevators. Um, and I think those, I forget, I, it says up to X number, I think it's like 80,000 maybe or something like that, but I think it could cover a lot of the cost. Some of these grants may have, I don't think the MERP has, it might have a match, but it's, I have to, it, it uh, does. Yeah, and it also allows for the ADA uh, compatible okay. uh, contributions out of the MERP as well. Okay, that's great, yep. Um, and then there's also some, and these are smaller, but like historic preservation grants that might be able to like maintain some of the historic integrity of the building. Um, and that might be storm windows, right? On the, mm -hmm. uh, and keeping the windows, but putting up storms in, in, instead. Um, so uh, Dorinda, who's the treasurer, um, she and I did meet with the Vermont Bond Bank to just get a sense of like, what's the next step? Like I've never done this before, so I don't you know, really know what we do next. Um, and he gave us um, a scenario of like in today's dollars, if we were to do a one and a half million dollar bond, um, did he do two million or one, one and a half million? One and a half, one and a half million dollar bond. Um, what would that look like? Um, and, um, and so I, I can't give you that number because everyone's house is different, but like per hundred thousand is sort of how you look at it, like, or no, per hundred, how, how much you pay. Um, and I'm not going to say like right now, oh, it's going to cost me $400 a year, but over a 30 year, he gave us a 25 and a 30 year plan. Mm -hmm. It might be for someone whose house like mine is assessed at, I think, um, 300 maybe or something like that. It might be around 400 a year that I, I would be paying on a bond for 30 years. Um, ideally it'd be great to get rid of the fire station bond and kind of replace that bond because we're all paying on a fire station right now um, and take up a different bond right for the for the town hall 
um, so that it's not such a big um, uh, shock to, to folks. Um, because remember that this is, a mu this is a part of our municipal taxes, not our education taxes. So you don't get a tax break on this um, per se, like you might on your education taxes. Um, and then I also think that we need to have a strong community fundraising piece of this. So picture yourself the Chris McVeigh Coffee Center, right? Because Chris has donated some, some level of money. I just threw out 200000 I think it's a reasonable request to see, can we get sponsorships from the people? Maybe some businesses um, in town or private donors who want to help raise the money and put a stake into sort of this piecing together these fundings. And this is very typical for something like a town hall where you do have a sort of philanthropic piece of the fundraising so that you can alleviate some of the tax burden um, for the taxpayers. And then the VLCT, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, um, has a list of all the grants and fundings that can be available to help us piece this together. There are some things also coming down the road like sort of low interest loans for some energy things that if we surpass or don't get all of the MERP money that we can get very low interest loans on doing some energy things. So this is a huge, this is a huge project. Mm -hmm. The next step, I don't even know if I have any. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, with the MERP money yeah. being eligible for that, does there have to be a assigned deal that is moving forward even to be able to apply for the grant? Um, so um, we basically what, I and I haven't seen the application and no one has, so I don't know what the application looks like. Mm -hmm. But I think the intention is that we would be, um, and I'll just put it out there, we're going to use this MERP money, whether there's Do a what? I said we're going to use this MERP money, whether there's a renovation or not, oh, okay. right? We're not passing up money You're like this. You're taking it as a for granted. How competitive is that? Um, the towns, they want to give the money away. They, they know we're on this. Like I've been talking with them for months about this. Yeah. They want to support projects like this. Um, so it's as competitive as the people in the town who pull together to do the work to make it happen, right? And if we have people who are willing to like, like this is what we really need. We need to hire a consultant who, you know, and we have some, we have a little bit of money from Merp that's just like pre-money. We have about $3,500 to help us navigate the funding sources as well as apply for the MERP grant, right? That's what this money can be used for um, because we have to leverage this money. We know our heating system is failing. We know we could use some weatherization here. This money is here and it's here now and it makes sense to do a renovation at the same time. Now is the time, people, it really is. Like, it's not in 10 years. It's now because of this funding. Okay. Yes, the state's, the state's looking for basically shovel-ready projects. Yes. You know, the, the closer you are to having a plan to move forward, the more competitive you are in that. And that being said, there's $45 million sitting there. Okay. And the $500,000 is a, is a cap. So it's up to $500,000. But I think Liz and I have been talking with folks involved with the MERP uh, funding stream before they even knew what they were doing with it. So right. uh, Liz We've, has been- Since day one, Randy and I have been really talking about this. And so they know, and they know that like we're serious, right? And they know that we have these needs, right? Um, and um, I mean, we're even talking with them about, can we, if the guy comes in and does the fire station review and we need a heat, we need something in there next week but he's, you know, he's recommended something, can we retroactively add it to our grant? And they're like, we think so, right? Like there's some possibilities. They want, they want municipality businesses to, uh, buildings to, um, to improve their heating systems in an, in an energy efficient way. Um, so the next thing is, so, so the next thing is really um, whether or not we ap apply for a bond at the moment, we, it would cost about 42000 in today's dollars to do the next phase design development, which is really getting more into the nitty gritty of what it would look like. Um, so those pictures would become more detailed. Um, and what do we call it again? The de design, design, development. De design development, right. Um, the vote, and I have to go back to my notes, um, and I know I don't want to, because we're already over time, but 
basically you can you can vote on a bond up to a certain amount of money and not actually take the bond out right away right it's it's more like we would present to the voters and I think our my timeline is thinking um, potentially next November I or could be as early as as town meeting um, to to request from the town a bond. It doesn't mean that we take that bond out right then. It means we've been approved. And then the bonds go out twice a year, in the spring and in the fall. Um, and so they're, they're on a time because they get bundled, state bundles bond requests. Um, and so if we took out a bond, then you would start to spend it, right? You would start to spend it on, like, your next phase development, or you'd start to spend it on... Um, you know, breaking ground, whatever it is that we would be doing next. But so because of the, because of the MERP funding and pairing this so nicely with the renovation, this is, we can't spend the next year contemplating this. This is something that we need to be spreading the news about with our fellow community members and getting on board with this idea of, of spending some big money that's not gonna get smaller, ever. It's only gonna get worse and more expensive. Um, so that is the presentation, <laughs> as I know it. And I can't tell you how much it's gonna cost you personally. <laughs> I think just to follow up on what Liz was just saying, you know, there's a whole lot of more funding opportunities <clears throat> coming down the road that we don't even know about yet. So, um, you know, I, I, I want to point that out because, I mean, I think we've been pretty consciously looking at what's out there and, and you know, going after whatever we possibly can to, to make this as least, the least burdensome for the residents as possible. Mm -hmm. So. And it started with literally uh, doing the renovation. Like that, it's, it's very, you know, there's nothing grandiose about this, but it brings it to the, it, you know, it's something that's fiscally responsible. Um, and frankly, necessary. Right. It really is, right? Yes, yes, sir. You doing, uh, uh, historical Society. You know that our town has like a 240 year history of not being proactive and <laughs> not doing anything and making up for things because we haven't done the planning. So I would like to commend the committee for the work they put into it. And I think it is our chance to draw together as a community and say, if you want to be Middlesex and you want to have an identity and a place to, to share together, you know, this may be the time. Here, here. <laughs> now, now. Yeah, now, now, now. now. <laughs> Today. Anything else, anyone? Obviously, obviously, there's a lot more that needs to happen for this to happen. Um, when... And if we will have additional public meetings is yet to be determined, but we'll certainly be uh, discussing this at select board meetings as we, as we go along. And I have to envision, especially as we get into the design development phase, that we would definitely have more public meetings, at least one. And this, pr this presentation will be put on the What's Next Middlesex page, which has a town hall um, page to it. Um, and that's that's also on the Middlesex website, right? Middlesex Middlesex link is on the, I think it is. Would you want to put on from board to board? Uh, yeah, I can put the link. Wider yeah. Viewing than or at least say on front porch form that it's where it's available. Right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank Liz and Randy and Dave Nagita very very much. And Sandy. Right. <laughs> for um, all the hard work and, and really, really, really tough digging into these grants and all the meetings, um, you know, I whine a lot, but those guys do it, so thank you very much. And it's a really good, I think it's a really good plan. Great, okay, thanks, Sarah. Right, right now, we have, we're so swamped with FEMA hell that I keep thinking there's no way we can do this, but maybe when the fog clears that could be our neighbor. Yeah. yeah thank you, Liz. I mean, obviously, obviously, the other gigantic question, which is which is down the road, is how do we operate while this renovation is going on? Do we set up a tent? Do we move into the old fire department? Who knows what we do? So, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can benefit from our neighbors having been flooded out, right? We can uh, 
Waterbury had to deal with it. Moortown had to deal with it. So yeah. we'll figure it out. Oh, no, we'll, f we'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, there are challenges ahead. But I agree. I really appreciate the work uh, that the committee did. And uh, obviously, there's more work to be done. There's a lot done. more work to be done. Yeah, but, but thank you. And, and also, I presume you would welcome additional participation if people were interested? Yes, for sure. I mean, so, and, and I think we are really, you know, um, because we're all, you know, working and trying to do volunteer stuff at the same time, um, you know, the, the big, the next sort of big job is uh, figuring out how to piece how, how to apply for the MERP and piecemeal sort of what we know is going to be MERP accessible in this and also dealing with like asking for a bond. Like those are those are the big things that have to happen pretty soon. Yes. What is the process of getting the approval to go ahead with design development at $42,000? How are we going to fund it? How are you going to fund it? Yeah. That's what he's asking. It's going to come out of the market. I, 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 don't, I don't know the answer. There's no money. There's no 42000 in in this year's budget to do it. So we've got to find the money somehow. Ideally, we keep the process moving along. <coughs> I agree, David. I'm just, I'm just saying there is no money yeah. in this year's budget, and there's no extra $42,000 that I'm aware of. So we've got to figure out whether we can, whether we can apply for the MERP and draw down money. I mean, I guess that would be the... Like easiest thing. Yeah, I don't right? think Merck would cover that, but um, yeah. but uh, but that's really where a bond comes in, right? Which is yeah. like, so, yes, Sarah. Well, I was going to ask if we put a if we put a bond on the uh, town meeting warning for March and it passes. Yeah. Can't you just? Isn't that enough time to make uh, to? It's only within. We're not that far out. We're in six months. Yeah. We're six months from March right now. I, I, I don't know if that I'm not that far. It's about right. before they yeah. commit to a bond. And it would take a week. Right, I know. Know, Just as a practical matter. We're going to stumble, stumble upon something yeah. we haven't seen yet. Uh, there is some very, very good news. That, that news is uh, they looked at the structural, and there are no problems there. Oh, that Those are this news. age. That's, yes, that's a huge that. thing. The other huge thing for us is that it was able to fit within this building. Mm -hmm. I agree. And that's a lot of hard work by the committee and by the architects and their consultants. So I would just repeat myself that it would be great if we could continue with the design development. I understand your, your <laughs> big I don't know if I know, I know. Pay for design the development. Megiddo do you know? conference room. I don't know if you're that <laughs> it would only be $45,000, and that would give us the money to go ahead with the design development. I'm sure. I think they're but I mean, there may be, I mean, yeah, I think so. The money that's coming into the state right now is crazy. So might there be grant money available yeah, to, to go ahead with this? Yeah, if we can find it, we'll do it. But I agree. I, I hate I hate to think we're going to, you know, basically well, we sit on our hands our for money. six months. Yeah. Yeah. But we haven't fully um, relegated. Well, and some of, some of the things that you're doing here with ARPA, uh, the ventilation system and some of those things, uh -huh. I think would, be, would qualify under be under our ARPA funds that we got a long time ago that we haven't They should. Yet. Other yeah. municipalities yeah. have been using that for ventilation and some of the... Our that was what I was oh, you were talking about ARPA. For. Yeah. yeah. Our overspent ARPA funds. Or our overspent yeah. ARPA. Well, we haven't spent them yet. But no, we haven't. Yeah. No, we haven't. We're not. using it currently. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, do you have another comment, Sarah? I just, well, you know, we just have to understand that we've taken out a $3 million line of credit just so everybody here understands what we're dealing with with these floods. Yeah. It is a, and we are, we are working day and night, and Dorinda is busting her butt trying to figure out how we're going to get that money back. So mm -hmm. we're doing everything we can, but it is yeah. really scary. I can't tell this you came at a very scary. bad, this, this request is likely coming at a terrible time. If we, well, we don't get FEMA. We will. We will. We're going to get FEMA. Oh, that's a huge but, but Sarah's right. We have taken out a $3 million um, loan oh, right. to pay Not for our bills until FEMA mm -hmm. pays us. So... Mm -hmm. And the other, the other no issue with, with FEMA is there's at least a 25% match, or the, well, a minimum of a 25% match. Could be less. From the town. Yes. So that's where if it's, if it's $3 million, 25% of $3 million is a big unbudgeted expense. So we're trying to deal with that. And all that ARPA money that people think is floating around there could be sucked up awful fast. Yeah, sure could be. 
Sure could be. So, you know, we've got to make the money. We got to make the money work to make this happen. But it seems like there are opportunities, and I I agree, uh, David. We should be pursuing them, and I know uh, Randy and Lazar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I just wanted to say thank you all. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with your community. Your committee is a true gift to your whole community. I mean, they work their their tails off, and it, it's been. It's been really, really fun, and so we look forward and hope that there's an opportunity uh, to work with you in the future. And as you look ahead to design development, please keep communicating with us to give us a little bit of a heads up, uh, just so that we can hold that schedule, because uh, we really would love to be a partner. Um, so thank you for your time. Great. Thank you. Well, thank yeah, you for time. coming up to be with us tonight. Thank we you. appreciate it. So we're now going to move where we've used up 45 minutes of our other time. I'm sorry? We need to do the bid thing, don't we? At least. No, let's, let's more or less get back to our schedule. I mean, excuse me, I, I don't know your name, SBA. Monica Mott. Monica, Monica, how long is, how long? Oh, yeah, I can hear you, how are you? Okay, is your presentation fairly brief? Yes. I hate to have you, we're, we're going to be here, we're going to be here a while, and I hate to have you sitting in the, in the wings waiting, so if you could do your best, most efficient job to give us your presentation, that would be great. Okay, I'm ready now. Okay, go for oh, it. Okay. Okay, well, great. Um, good evening, um, everyone. My name is Monica Miles. I'm a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Small Business Administration. And the um, U.S. Small Business Administration just wants to make sure that uh, the homeowners, the people who rent their home, the businesses and the nonprofits in Washington County are aware that um, the SBA has low interest rate disaster loans available. The deadline to apply for a um, disaster property loan is coming up um, very soon on October 12th, 2023. And the disaster is with respect to the um, floods and storms that occurred back in the month of July, between July 7th to July 21st. Um, the SBA's um, uh, disaster loans with respect to homeowners uh, can provide up to $200,000 for a loan um, for, um, the property damage uh, that occurred to uh, a person's home in um, the county as a result of the uh, floods and storms in July. With respect to the um, internal contents of the home, the personal property for somebody who's renting their home or somebody who owns their um, home is $40,000. And that would include things like their furniture, appliance, um, equipment, and, and vehicles as well, up to $40,000. With respect to a business or a nonprofit um, in the county, the maximum loan amount is $2 million. Uh, of course, this depends upon what um, any um, applicant's um, a, ability would be to repay the loan as well, and as to the damages themselves. Um, and uh, the SBA's loan, Although we tell people do not um, wait for to hear from your insurance company before applying to the, for the loan. Um, if you do end up getting, if the applicant it does end up getting um, proceeds from their insurance company or perhaps from FEMA, the SBA's loan would be something uh, separate from from that. So we don't duplicate uh, what someone would receive from their insurance company or for FEMA. If an applicant applies to the SBA. Um, has, hasn't heard from their insurance company, and later on the insurance company gives some proceeds, they can um, use that funds to prepay their SBA loan, but they don't have to wait that period of time 
because we do realize that um, quite often insurance companies may take um, an extended period of time before uh, the matter is settled. The interest rates for the loan for a homeowner or a renter is 2.5%, um, and that goes for the real estate and the um, personal property for the person who owns their home. For a nonprofit organization, the interest rate is 2.375%, and for business, it's as low as 4%. Now, uh, the interest rates can increase for um, uh, applicants, if they have a very um, excellent credit rating and would be able to get um, a loan on the um, open market, but those are the um, uh, the the rates, the lowest that the rates go down. In addition, the SBA does not um, the loans will not accrue interest during the first year of the loan, and the first payment on the loan is not due until one year after the applicant receives um, their first draw on the loan. So, if an applicant actually um, uh, was able to pay off the loan uh, right just prior to a year, they would have the use of the funds um, for a whole year interest free. Um, in addition, the SBA does ask for um, collateral for loans that exceed $25,000, but if the applicant doesn't have any collateral, they can still go forward with the, with the loan as well. But if, if they do have collateral, the SBA does ask um, for the collateral um, to, sec uh, to secure the loan. Um, in addition, there's no application fee to apply for the loan. And uh, there's once a person applies for a loan, of course, they're not required to, to accept it. So if they decide they don't want the loan, they don't have to go uh, through with it as well. But, the, uh, but for the property uh, loan as it stands um, today, the deadline is on October 12th. And there's no uh, penalty um, if somebody wants to prepay the loan as well. So they can, uh, the, the loan time usually is 30 years, but if they want to um, pay it sooner than that, they can do so without any um, penalty. And um, in order to apply for the loan, um, the person could um, go to SBA's website, which is sba.gov forward slash disaster. And um, there's uh, plenty of information on the website that guides you um, through that process. Um, and a potential applicant could also call the SBA. Our phone number is 1-800-659-2955. If the person is hearing impaired, then they can call 711 for assistance. They can um, ask for um, the, well, at this time, I wouldn't ask for a, a application to be mailed out. Uh, you can also get a paper um, application um, online um, if you want to print it out. Um, but you can also ask the SBA if they're, what centers are in your um, area. And there um, uh, still are um, two centers in um, Washington County. One's at um, Barre Auditorium and the other one is at Waterbury um, Armory. And the uh, one located actually in um, Barre Auditorium is uh, last day is going to be on October 11th, and the one in Waterbury Armory is uh, last day is going to be on October 14th. Um, and um, with respect to the uh, for businesses and nonprofits, um, they have um, another type of loan that they can um, apply for, and that's called an economic injury disaster loan. Now, um, the deadline date I stated earlier, October 12th. Again, that's just for property uh, loans, um, damages to the building, damages to a house, damage to the pro personal property, including the cars, um, clothing, equipment um, for business, um, supplies, things of that nature. Um, that deadline is October 12th. For the um, businesses that want to apply for what's called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, that date is not until April 15th, 2024. For businesses and nonprofits can apply for um, an economic injury disaster loan. And an economic injury is something similar to um, if the uh, business had to close um, for a while due to a lack of electricity, road closures, um, their workers, uh, suppliers, customers, 
uh, not being able to make it to the business to make purchases because of the effect of the disaster on its, on themselves, the road closures, things of that nature. And the, over a period of time, the business recognizes that its revenue has decreased, then the um, uh, business can apply for an economic injury disaster loan. Um, and then it's still incorporated in that $2 million figure for, for businesses, uh, and uh, and nonprofits, the $2 million is for everything together. Um, uh, with the homeowners, um, it's the 200,000 for the real estate. And again, the 40,000 uh, for the personal um, property. Uh, then for the economic injury um, as well, um, it is, uh, again, it has the same interest rate up to 4%. 4 um, and then it's something, um, again, that takes place typically over a period of time before business re recognizes that it has suffered, that it believes it has suffered an economic injury as a direct result of the disaster. So again, that deadline to apply for that isn't until April of 15th, 2024. And the way that loan is designed is if the, the business is not able to pay its um, uh, necessary um, obligations uh, in order to remain open, uh, that's how the uh, the loan is uh, generated, but with that being a part of the um, equation as, as well. And the loan is um, designed to uh, continue to provide funds to the business as, ne as needed throughout the disaster period. So uh, that can be um, loan proceeds being provided over a period of time. Um, as needed. Um, one other resource um, for a uh, potential applicant is to go to um, disasterloanassistance.sba.gov and um, you can find the application um, directly at that particular location as well. As well. Um, the last um, loan that I just wanted to mention is um, mitigation loans. And that is so that a homeowner or a business can build back better. Uh, for a homeowner, uh, they can um, apply for up to for an additional amount of money, separate from the two hundred thousand, separate from the forty thousand. Uh, the the mitigation loan um, addition could be up to twenty percent of whatever the homeowner's verified property loss damages uh, were. So up to twenty percent of that amount uh, that has been verified verified by the SBA they can apply for um, a loan funds for mitigation. The mitigation funds could be used for such things as sump pump, um, French drains, retaining walls, things of that nature. Um, if they have uh, different ideas, new ideas, they can always bring it to the SBA and the agency will in, um, review it to determine if uh, their pro particular project um, would um, be eligible for the mitigation loans. Uh, same thing with respect to a business as well. And that's pretty much it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but you've used up your time. <laughs> so thank, okay. thank you very much for your presentation. That was good information. We really appreciate oh, okay, it. Okay, good. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, okay. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Highway report, gentlemen. We're doing bids. You've got the floor. Steve and uh, Eric worked very hard on this. Um, the details of the work, I think, is in, uh, I think, oh, it's in this printout that uh, Terry gave you. Yep. And the contractor's bids. Uh, the rating that we came up with was the same as before. And uh, everyone's okay with that. Uh, Steve? From here? Yes. So before the start, the specialist should give a price of what the cost, what he is, expects this cost, this to cost, this project. Well, we got that. Well, please say it for the record. I was just going to do that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought your specialist was Steve. 
Well, Steve is a specialist, but he asked me I to. Just to uh, make sure these are done correctly. Yeah. Okay. This Thank is, you. This is Steve's estimate. Was uh, one one hundred and nine. Eighteen thousand seven hundred and thirty-eight dollars. One hundred and nineteen what? One hundred and nineteen thousand seven hundred and thirty-eight dollars. I don't know as you have that number there. I don't think we do. No, that's written. Just was written on here. But if you'd like to write that down again, one hundred and nineteen thousand seven hundred and thirty-eight dollars. You have anything you want to add to that? Or? So anyways, we had uh, three bidders, uh, Jay McDonald, um, All Seasons Excavating, and Isaacs um, out of, uh, exactly, kind of thought, forgot where exactly they were. West Charleston. West Charleston, just a little bit of a ride. Um, Anyways, McDonald's bid was $136,226. The uh, Isaac's bid was $136,450. Unbelievably close. And all seasons bid uh, was actually $112,050, but that was with the stipulation the town was buying the material, paying for the material, so there was no markup or anything, right? Mm -hmm. And that came up to $22,000, Steve estimated. So their total bid was $134,050. Wow. Or about $2,000. Um, 2,200 bucks, 300 bucks less than the other two. Are there I'm any? Looking at your, I'm looking at your scoring sheet here. They had the best score all seasons. They did. Yeah. And they also received the other bid. They did. And would they be able to do the work? They said they would be, yes. They gave us a, I don't know if it's, they gave us a timeline of uh, three weeks. About three weeks, and they're starting. Three weeks to start. And they're starting, I'm not so sure they didn't start t today. Not today. Not today. They'll be in this week. Today if we haven't awarded a bid. That was on the no, the other, yeah. oh. what, what was that? I'm sorry. You said that they started today, and I asked how they could start if we haven't awarded a bid. That's true, but the, I meant uh, we have awarded the other one. It was on the other one that they started today. Yeah. And their duration on that one is three weeks? About that. So they could start. It's a best guess. So they could start this one right immediately following that one and roll right in? That's what they said, yeah. And I think also if they got it uh, in all uh, reality, seeing as all the work is right in the same area, uh, they probably would work them together. And the duration of this one, did they estimate? All, all, everybody estimated two to three weeks. It's going to snow next week, so we got to get going. How much it's going to be 80 degrees tomorrow. What's that? Yes, you're correct. I'm sorry. Remember the other bid that they won? Um, Six, how, how far off were they? They on? were 67000 for without materials on that. Right. But how, what was the differential between that and the other ones? I think when we factored in uh, town materials, it was between 5 and 10. So it wasn't huge? Different than the yeah, other. Yeah, it wasn't a huge difference between the others. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Would you if you think they can. Need. Yeah. So, you gentlemen are recommending uh, all seasons for a total of one hundred and thirty-four thousand fifty dollars. Correct. Would you like Someone a motion to make that motion? Does anybody have any further questions, Randy? So it looks like they'd be finished up the week before 
Thanksgiving if they were awarded both both projects based on that two to three week time frame here. Is there anything that the town crew has to follow up on uh, for any of this work prior to or after? No. Alrighty then. Yeah, I move all. that we vote for all seasons excavating to do the Davy Road project. Is there a second? Can I second it? You can. I will. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded to accept the bid of all seasons excavating uh, for this project, which includes Davy Road, Upper Sunnybrook, and Baldock Road. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Can I ask one, one well, last yeah, question yeah, before sure, we yeah, do yeah. that? Are we supplying culverts as well? Yes. Or just, just, just stone one, and everything? Just one it's one all one. materials? Yeah. It's one. Yeah. And I actually Aggregate. have one more question. What's that? Yeah. Do we have more of these that you guys are going to be um, going out to bid? I don't think we do. Yeah. We're going to try. Better. You're going to try not to. We, we have more. We're out to bid if we can. Oh, you're going if to we have time. Oh, you mean because of the winter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's still more that needs to go out to bid. Oh, lot. Okay. Can I just bid. ask a question, Sarah? Is there any, um, like, let's say um, <laughs> we keep going out to bid and all seasons always comes out on top. Is there any, con suspicious? Is there any reason for us to be concerned about that? I don't think so. I think all people want to see is that you just, that you okay. the process and you can justify the, and you can justify the, the bids. So you properly advertised, you held a public meeting where you unsealed the bids, you awarded the bids based on a scoring system, and then you... Okay. Yeah. And I think, you know, some of the concern that you both have, which is real about getting it done, is that um, this the contractor is uh, finishing up other projects, so it's going to loosen up or have the ability for him to use other people in his business to come in. Nice it, uh, Brandy, you have brought up culverts. I didn't hear the answer. Is there going to be a culvert? All, all materials. All materials. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. Can I just say, ask another question? Agriculture. While I have you guys here, you're going to talk to the contractor about how to break down the culvert cost ahead of time, correct? The one culvert. We've learned. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. i got a good man on it now. There you go. Does everybody remember the motion now? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. You're all set, boys. Okay. What else have you got for us? Um, well, you get it written down here. Let's see. Uh, um, I wrote conditions. Uh, Eric can tell you he's been working on... Uh, South Bear Swamp? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah they're working on uh, South Bear Swamp now. I'm uh, doing some ditching, uh, foot bitten grading, um, East Hill, or West Hill. Um, Molly Supel. Molly Supel. East Hill. Yeah, did some on East Hill. I did uh, Cross Road, and then I fixed uh, Rich Road so they can get the contractors down there to start on the house. And, and we have to go to... Uh, North, North Bear Swamp. Yeah, we've got to get in there yep. and uh, where uh, um, Rupert went down through and saved the road yep. on yep. July 10th. Yeah, we're going to have to go in there and ditch that as well. That'll yep. be our next road to go to. And also, we're going to bring that material back into the road. And um, Nellie Chase Road. I was over that yesterday, and uh, they they repaired it temporarily with. Uh, uh, three and a half inch minus. Very hard to grade, so they'll have to put some uh, uh, better gravel, probably some gravel out of our town pit to save the expense of buying gravel. Um, so I hate to even say this, but yet. whenever winter comes, which could be as early as next week, we're ready, right? The equipment's ready to go. Put and the plows on the trucks. We've got the chains. We, we're yeah, but we don't have sand. We have sand. I was going to add that was going to be my next question. So they're going to yeah. They're going to start oh, on that next week. This guy's jumping me here. Hopefully next week. 
just kidding. We have some sand, right? We have the sand oh, left yes. over. We have from sand last year. left over from last year, and uh, and uh, they're going to go into the pit. Uh, I think the end of this week, and uh, we have to push the material down, and uh, I think hopefully next week they'll get in there and, and screen it out a little bit right. to the shop. Okay. Right. Um, the freight liner I still need to fix. Uh, a couple things on that before that's ready to go, but uh, yeah, other than that, we should be ready. The big thing on that's the uh, transfer case. Transfer case and the yeah. frame. Yeah. Please, please, please. Every year for the last few years, we've had complaints about the town trucks when we were hauling sand, going too fast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're, we're so please. Right whether it's hired trucks or our trucks, have them take it easy. Yeah, yeah we get those same emails. I know you do. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just reminding you, because yeah. I get them too. <laughs> Anything else, gentlemen? Anything uh, else, board members? Excavator? Excavator? Be before you move on, is any other, any Update things that, that you're concerned with as far as timing getting done before? Before winter, I know we brought up a few things, but I don't know if there's anything on your mind that. The other thing I had to do is I got to put another uh, roof over the salt shed because that one did not last. What? Is that a brand new salt shed? No. No, no. it was just it was a tarp. temporary. Oh. Our, te <laughs> our temporary <laughs> patch job. We we knew that was going to be the case. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you just go out and buy another tarp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's, no, there's a note Cheaper. on our agenda here for uh, uh, the. Uh, Update on the uh, excavator. Yeah, we don't really have an update. We just we haven't done it. We're not. We're 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 still using our rent, rental one, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we're we're not at any point to uh, park money. <sighs> haven't been okay. far yet. Been doing other things. How long do you have the rental? Until I bring it back. Open ended. But really, isn't it like two more weeks? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be running out of time here shortly. Because of winter? Yep. What? Okay. Six Any six questions, six. Randy? Liz? No. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Greg. Hey, thank you. No. Dorinda, Treasurer's Report, update on FEMA reimbursement process and other financial issues. Lucky you. Lucky me. Okay. Oh, so, Dorinda. as of... As of today, uh, we've incurred 1.937 in bills for the highway department. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> and they're still coming in. Um, we did were able to take one road today and summarize it. Uh, by road, we're trying to break it out by road now, and um, so just one road, as an example, was uh, three hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars just to do one road out of the many roads that got damaged. Which, which road so was that? That was Lower Sunnybrook. Yeah. So we, um, Sarah, I think, is at a point now where. We, we can submit that, uh, not submit it, but we're sending it off to our FEMA person as an example and see if it passes muster. And then we're going to proceed with the rest of the roads. Very time consuming, I'll tell oh. you that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, just to give... Uh, uh, a couple of you in an example of the problem we're up against, and I think this is really Liz and Randy because you might not be aware of this. When we met with the, our FEMA person last week, all of a sudden, right out of the blue, uh, he told us that every individual culvert has to be listed as a separate project and accounted for in that way. We had never been told that before. Did you cry? No, poor we Eric won't. might have because he, uh, he ended up having to do the culvert inventory and... So now, in addition to that, you have to have the culvert um, by road with the coordinates, and then we have to take the vendor's bills and we have to pull out oh of their 
every vendor bill, the portions that relate to the culvert, so you got the actual cost of the culvert, but then any dirt or aggregate or whatever's going in that hole has to be extrapolated out as well, and that becomes a culvert cost. So, so you know, typically proportional based on from like proportional value of yes, the culvert. Yes, that's so how the, um, I think it was. Was it Eric or Steve or somebody came up with the cost yeah. of what it cost to bury a culvert? Because I asked him the question. I said, I said, where do you where where do you draw the line when you're repairing the road and you're repairing the culvert at the same time? What's the culvert and what? He didn't have a good answer for that. So what we discussed was just coming up with a percentage and saying, here's what the culvert is. I mean, how can you possibly keep track of? what dirt goes into replacing the, what material goes into replacing the culvert and what goes into replacing the road. A lot of it's one and the same. So anyway, but it's just an example of the frustration with trying to get this paperwork together for FEMA. And, uh, yeah. I think Go ahead, worked Vic. with you on Thursday. Wasn't that Thursday worked with you? Well, we started going through... Thursday, Thursday. Um, we started to go through... Um, like the McCullough slips. Yeah, but you and him were downstairs, right? No, he did the culvert thing on his own he on did that Friday. Part, but what I was getting at is he, right. said, well, he physically drove every project and stopped at every, you know, went to every culvert. Right. And, and, and of course, there's a, there's a uh, program that, uh, and he correlated it with that program. What? I said that's good to know. That's good to hear the minutes that he did that. Yeah. Eric did that? Yeah. yeah. I know he Eric, spent I all day Eric Friday. On Friday. And he said that that's what he was doing that day. He, was, he started on Thursday, got okay. a couple roads done, and then Friday morning he said that he had a, told me which roads, I don't remember, but he said that he, he had a whole list of roads that he had yeah. to go. And all the time he was doing is, I got to get the transfer case in the freight line. I know. Yeah. He, he's, yeah. he's really being pushed. He's to really the swamped. That's all I'm he saying. Is very Sarah, swamped. do you need, like, help? help with this like First is there some all, let me just say that i am doing the easy work I, my work is simply just inputting stuff into a spreadsheet and um you know to contacting jerry because jerry doesn't want to hear from everybody so there's just like one person yeah um, i i think that uh dorinda has i don't know how she's sorting through these bills and how she's doing it it's just a nightmare um i know steve's helping it's just So have we gotten the updated invoices from the contractors with the information that we need, Steve? A lot of it. Yeah, I mean, so I think it. we're waiting for, um, we've got some more coming in tomorrow, okay. we've been told. Um, but for the most part, I think having gone through for the last two days all the invoices, I think we have everything we need, which then brings me to my next question. We haven't released these invoices, um, which if you're ready to, you know, if you're ready to say go ahead and release them if we've got what we want, I hate to wait another two weeks before we pay these contractors. Yep. Um, they're already knocking at the door. And um, I did tell one contractor today that you'll, he wanted to tell me how much money we owed him. And I said, well, we're waiting for this, and when we get that, you'll get your money. Yeah, so. as, long as, the, as long as they've given us what we need to do, what we need to do with FEMA, I think we yeah. should start paying them. Are they included in tonight's orders? No, they are not, because nobody, I've made it quite clear I wasn't paying a bill until somebody gave me the okay. So okay. I don't so know do we who, need to, do we who's going to gonna release them, but it's not me. <laughs> no, but all I'm all I'm saying is, do we need to amend the order tonight to include some of those invoices? Is that what you're asking well, us to do? Well, if that's what you want to do, right now we have. Do that as a separate item by itself. Right we now, can do it there's as a separate order or just amend it. Two point one one million in payables. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not all FEMA, or it is all. That's all. It's all. Um, it's. FEMA, with the exception of 900000 for the school, which can wait till next week. So? So you're talking a million. Two million. 
But no. is, the, is the school no, on tonight's no. orders or not? Huh, that's in the outstanding payables. But it's not but, in tonight's it, orders. Huh, it's not in tonight's <laughs> orders. We've got one more. We can send it out next week and be within the payables. Okay, but we need but to approve Not it. next week, the following Oh, so we can wait till the next board meeting. Yeah, the okay. next board meeting. But these other ones, I hate to wait two weeks on. You have I, would I would recommend, if everybody agrees, that we add that, round it off to a million dollars to the orders tonight. How many How many items is that, three or four items? Oh, I, uh, I can't tell you. I mean, there's ones in here. We're paying $83,000 to Pike tonight for the rest of the paving project. Right. So, I mean, there's bills in here that have to be paid, but um, we're sitting on, that's in addition, that's in the orders tonight. Yeah. In addition to the orders tonight, I have these other ones outstanding. I think you're better off is saying that when Steve releases the bills or, um, you know, he's the project manager. If he says it's okay to pay, then I guess if you're giving me the authorization to write the check and then retroactively, you know, sign the order for it, that's fine. But I'm fine with that as long as we get the information. I'm working with Dorinda all the time as long as we've got all the information. Okay, well all all I'm looking for guys is for you to for you to tell me that we've got what we need from these contractors. If we do, I'm in favor of adding them to tonight's invoice and Paying them. If we don't, I'm not in favor of doing I, I would say do it as a separate item and give them the okay once they've verified that they have it. Yeah. So it's it's not just a blanket approval. It's right. there's a verification that they've the con if contractor A has given us everything, release their payment. If contractor B still has stuff, then right. we release. need to hold. That's what we have to do. So I think okay. I think we should do it that way. Okay. So what we what we need, Dorinda, is for you to give us no those amounts. I don't have those amounts. I mean, unless you want me to sit here and add up, I don't. I can tell you that, you know, like this group has to come off, this group has to come off, but you know, I don't have a magic number like that. It's roughly a million dollars. But what, what Randy's recommended won't take care of that. Right. That will take care of it. it yes, it will. Right. Yeah, that's. But hold that's on, what so you have there is everybody. That is every payable in the system. Right okay. Now. But it's a, but, but it's some of them like they're multiple invoices some for of different contracts. Multiple contract. multiple invoices. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So uh, I think that as we go through these contractor bills and one more time, then we'll take and say, okay, we have everything we need from. You know, X and go ahead and we'll pay that. Bill. And is there a total on that sheet? Yeah, two million, two point one one. Because that includes the school. And for the nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Nine hundred and eleven. Nine eleven. So, so what you need tonight, I, I just want to be sure we do this the correct way. What you need tonight is a vote from the select board to approve paying those invoices up to a total amount that you're going to give us. Once you verify to your satisfaction, I'm not giving you a total amount. If you're no. going to give me approval to pay the invoices, provided Steve and I are in agreement that we have received everything, well, that's an estimate. Up, up to that amount, we could say up to that amount. I don't. We've got to give you some kind amount. of a number. Why? Why? <laughs> I mean, we we squabble over toilet paper invoices for forty-five dollars, and now we're just going to give you a blanket authority with no amount of what it is well it's the invoices i mean we but we're yeah, going to pick and choose but, out of these it's one one point one nine okay if you take okay it, so this is okay, what I'm up to two point one one but i know all i'm suggesting school. dorinda is that we should have a number in the in the thing so if heaven forbid it ends up we don't pay one invoice that's not the end of the world but let's put some kind of a number in the so what's the number andy one point one nine that's what she said originally okay wasn't okay. it so the motion is the motion that I'm asking for is to give the town treasurer the authority, once all the information we need is received, to pay those bills up to that amount. I pay those invoices so up to that amount. I'll, and I'll make the motion like this. The motion should be that we approve up to the $1.19 million after Steve has signed off that the contractor has 
uh, provided all required information to satisfy uh, our FEMA requirements, and that Dorinda then can cut that check for that specific invoice with the with the verification from Steve. Do you mean 1.9? 1.19. 1.19. Yeah, because the nine nine hundred is the school is separate. The nine hundred and eleven thousand dollars we're going to deal with that in the next meeting. Okay. Oh, we don't have to approve that today. No, no. So that's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All I in just favor? have a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you know how when we sign the orders? <laughs> yes. We're signing like looking at that you're only stuff. signing tonight when you sign the orders you're only signing for what's been in this yeah what's right in that here. thing right okay. so what you're approving is for me to release the payments yeah. up to 1.1 1. 1, whatever number yeah. it was you gave in payments to the contractors yeah. okay. and so when will we sign those orders at your next meeting okay and we'll keep them in a separate gotcha and they might be smaller because you only paid five people. Could be. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Can you read that back, Sarah? <laughs> okay, I'm trying my best. Randy moved to approve that the treasurer pay contractors up to 1.19 for the work they have to do on the Yes, I would just like to make sure that it's explicitly clear that Steve can sign off on each invoice right. so and not every invoice for that contractor has to be held up because one invoice isn't satisfied. Right. So it's on a per invoice approval basis. Yes. Yep. Okay, so approved, moved that to approve that moved to approve the treasurer may pay contractors up to 1.19 million dollars total after Steve has signed off on each invoice all right i've got it. well we got it yeah <laughs> you got it I, I, okay i just wanted to make sure we weren't going to hold up all payments to a contractor right. because just one right. invoice wasn't satisfied yep right. yep so yep yep victor victor seconded it are we ready for a vote all in favor aye aye anybody opposed there you go. You got it. There you go. Can I ask Thank another you. question now? There yes. Um, did you say, how much have we spent on roads FEMA-wise? FEMA-wise, 900. 1.937. So that's where that 1.9 is coming from, right? No, the 1.19 that I just made the motion on that's, is what she has in invoicing already. Okay, 1.9. 1 1.937 are current billings. Okay. So does that mean that we could the town it would 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 owe up to maybe five hundred thousand dollars? Correct. Yeah. That's scary, isn't it? That's what I was talking about earlier this evening. Okay. Yes. And that's just highway number. This includes everything, not that the other, any other portion is that big, but we have, you know, overhead expense, we have um, staffing, sta here. Yeah, staffing, we have all of that that goes into that number as well. Into it or going to raise it? Well, it will make the 25% portion higher. Yeah, okay. Well, right? staffing is 100%. Is that 100%? Okay. okay. So, there you go. and as far as I know, and I called the League of Cities and Towns today to say, you know, what's going on with regard to that 25% FEMA amount? Is the state going to come up with some of that money? Are there other plans to do it? Nothing yet. So, hopefully, it'll be less than 25%. But right now, as it stands today, the best information I could get is it's 25%. So, they did not approve. The reduction of that 25% to whatever it was, 10% or whatever that we talked about previously. Haven't done it yet. Okay. They're hoping to. I was under the impression that that had, that had been approved, but okay. Thank you. I think it's in the works, but it is not approved. Now, who knows? This is talking to somebody at the League of Cities and Towns. I didn't talk to the governor's office or anybody else. 828 3333. To the governor's office? I know. The hotlines. 
speak to his desk. I've got, I've got, uh, I've got the governor's cell phone. I found that's very effective. Hey, it's Peter. I try not to use it anyway. Anything else on the highways? Uh, treasurer. Treasurer. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> treasurer. <laughs> I don't you are the highway. The highway. It really is. The <laughs> Go ahead, Durand. I'm sorry. I apologize. Not a job I want. Um, no, Good night, I think Steve. that's all said. Good night. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. Good night. We should be able to. We're paying the last of the paving project grant tonight. That's in the orders. So we should be able to submit that and Good. hopefully get that money back. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Dorinda. Thank you for all your hard work, Dorinda, to say the least. Thank you. Um, errors and omissions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, there's a, a change in the Howell trucks and it's due to current use because they put a second part from the current use and now the property's touched. So then they're, they're considered contiguous pro properties that come to the state of Vermont. So we had to put them, instead of two spam number, to one spam number and tax bill. So it's gonna change probably revenue, it's approximately $25 change. So not too much, but I guess this is going forward according to our district advisor. Anything to do with current use now, if the properties are touching under the same owner and the state wants them under the same umbrella and be contiguous, which changes their value. So this end up changing it to 40,500 less than what it was originally. Going backwards every meeting a little bit at a time. Yeah. And a lot of it's all, all the changes in the state. No. I get it. Yeah. I get it. So is there a motion to approve that change? I, I, I'll approve the change. Okay. Second? I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Thank you. Hopefully we're getting to the end of these. I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Will you, shall we? Will you say that one more time about the so if you have something in land use or current use, yeah. and say so you have multiple properties, if you put a second property in current use amongst a side of another one that's touching that's in current use, they now become contiguous properties according to the state. So it falls under the same bunch of land instead of having two different spam numbers or parcel IDs, it's under all under one. But they have to and, be and then you have a larger portion of acreage, so now the value goes down a little bit. Thank you. Did you guys vote on that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think we're down to uh, other business considering the Energy Committee's recommendation to consider window dresser inserts for the town hall windows action possible. And we have a uh, little memo on that subject in our in our packet yeah you're up all right thank you i'm larry sharp representing the energy committee with marge detpoff here um so past couple of years the throughout vermont new hampshire and maine uh, communities have been building these window inserts they're basically insulating windows uh, storm windows on the inside and so this is a small model um, we figure that um, if you install these on all these windows here, and this is based on calculations from the organization that makes these, that they would pay for themselves in three years or less based on current propane fuel usage. So if the VIA project you know, were to happen next year, then I would say it's not worth it. But if that whole renovation is a few years out and these windows are staying, then these things could serve for 10 years. And so cost, you know, somewhere around $700 maybe to do all these windows. And, um, and then, so the only questions are, is this a, a safe space for, you know, this kind of plastic window to be in? Or do you have cats <laughs> that are going to tear them? Um, and then the second thing is, in the summer, you want to take them out and store them somewhere. So you just need to know that you have a, a good place to store 10 of these big things somewhere. So that's the only kind of catch. And we're almost sort of, I mean, 
In recent years, we've been bad about even putting down the storm windows that are on these windows, let alone right. having window inserts. But these go on these from windows the windows don't work very well. Yeah. yeah. I've had the honor of trying to do that in the past, and it's not an easy right. task. Right. So these things just slide right in. They're custom cut to fit, and they just fit right in, and then you don't touch them until the spring when you want to take them out. And you don't have to take out the north side. Right, you can leave the north ones in if you don't want to open those oh. those windows. Sorry, I'm sorry. Is it seven hundred dollars total or total? Per window? Total. Yeah, this is a community. Yeah. <laughs> we we just spent one point one million. Now we're now we're talking about seven hundred dollars. Right. right. So there's a community event happening in Waitsfield in November where we're going to build these with volunteer effort, and we figure we can get Middlesex people to help do that. If you say, yeah, we're doing this, and it'll keep Sarah warm. <laughs> we have them at our house, and they, they actually do work nicely. Like you, yeah. People rave about them. Yeah, and, so. they're, and they're, they're not, you know, we don't have them on every window. Um, yeah. But in the rooms, but, but Leaky, very noticeable. the house right over yeah. there, same vintage, she is so impressed with them. She put in 10 last year. So and same vintage, same situation, can. Leaky windows. And there's at least a chance if we're going to keep the old windows that we right. could use them even if we did the renovation. Yeah. Although that's right. determined. Yeah, it's hard to know. Like, I mean, it's hard to know too. Like, what they would do doing to treat those windows. You know, would it? Right. We don't know. Yeah. Right. But I mean. So you're asking for a vote right now, whether or not we would. Approve yeah, because we need to. What do you call those? Window dressers Window inserts. Dresser? Yeah, inserts. Here in the town hall. Is it exactly seven? For the, and it's it's no. the upstairs windows. Yes. Uh, it's not exactly seven hundred. We need to measure them precisely, and then, but we know it's less than seven hundred. Okay, so up to seven hundred. Up to seven hundred dollars. Okay. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're spending the money now, <laughs> right, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, it's. It's not a great deal of money, but I will say that you know uh, the the efforts going into the town hall and the amount of the timeline that 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 work has to be done to satisfy all of these other funding mm -hmm. uh, efforts. There's a very good likelihood that these won't be uh, utilized past you know uh, 2025. But you know what? But here's the reality: they'll you know, truly make get, Sarah more comfortable. They, they might they not will. Save money, and, but it will make her more comfortable. And that's I, I guess, that's where. What? Your select board meetings. Those, you can come play about the wind blowing yeah. through here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it will. And, and it's probably not. It's probably not going to be the same amount of money. Yeah. Because it's not the same as the wind blowing. So it has it has my vote, but I do just want to recognize yeah. that yeah. No, that you know these won't pay for themselves, in my opinion, based on the time frame that we're looking at, but. There are other reasons other than just and then we sheer can monetary them. payback. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, can they be cut down and be repurposed? Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's easy to rewrap them, so we can. Yeah, cut so them down. you might be able to put them so, someplace so, else. Someplace else, or give them to somebody in the town that needs it. Yeah. So we well, did a, we did approve up to seven hundred dollars just to make that clear. My, my comments came clear. afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys vote? Yeah, yes. We did. We yes, we did. Board. All right, thank you very much. She's over there. She's cold. Right. So she <laughs> yeah, to it's going to be cold is, next week. Is yeah, my right. guess is that, that we could also just use some of that $4,000 for these. I can double check. Yeah, we need to lab. check on that, the Merck because money. Yeah. That we have this $4,000 that has to be spent. And I'm sort of hoping to hire someone to help us with the Merck application. But I'm not sure who we can find to do that. Like, you know, I have some consultants. I've reached out to a couple people. Um, and... Like, there is a list of people who do this kind of thing. Yes. But whether or not we'll do it for $3,000, I don't know. I wouldn't, but. <laughs> um, can I just ask one question before we move on? Seth, can you repeat the time frame that you were talking about having those built? Uh, it's the first week of November. Okay. So they'll, be, they'll be here by the 7th. That's great. Thank you. So we, we do need volunteers, though, and it's fun to build them. So I'm looking yeah. at the people that come and I'm like, <laughs> no, but it really is. Like, you go in and you spend the day, you, you build, you like. Four hour shifts. Yeah, you're, you're like in a different, you might be wrapping them, you might be putting the tape on, you might be, I don't know. 
I, I think we're going to have to require the select board to put in a four-hour <laughs> shift, right? Maybe <laughs> you're going to. Hey, animal. we'll send Brady well, down as our designated so representative. It's only time. <laughs> Great. It's only time is right. I think I'm not your daddy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be glad. <laughs> Sarah will be glad. Sarah and Well, and we do, as a, as, as a side issue, and I know you guys are involved, but as we go forward with this town hall project, we want to be sure you guys are actively involved in that. Well, Exactly. I feel like they need to be doing this stuff that I want to hire. Like, they need to be looking at the Merck funding and all that. That's their job. Uh-oh. And I know <laughs> I know the person. You have, you have the power to influence one member. I have the power to influence one member. I'll be more, more project, than happy to help. <laughs> right, Marge? Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, so those kits will get, they'll go into production next week. The, the kits cutting of the window frames as soon as we measure. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. will appreciate it, too. Consideration of a FEMA buyout for Gloria Fields property at 158 Three Mile Bridge Road, action likely. Sarah. Yes. Gloria Fields would like a buyout of her property at 158 Three Mile Bridge Road. This is actually a pretty distressed property. Um, she's not returning there, and uh, FEMA thinks that they, she makes a good candidate, or Vermont Emergency Management thinks she makes a good candidate for buyout. So all I just need is to, for you guys to authorize going forward. You're not signing off. You're just saying, yes, we yes. want to go forward and authorizing Peter to sign the documents. Is there a motion? Victor's so moves. Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Do you have anything else on that list? No, but my question is, do we have any sense, Sarah, of FEMA's ability to buy out these properties or their willingness to or interest in? Uh, well, yes, because I'm in, I, I had a con an email from them last, from uh, Brian Walters last week, who's in charge of the buyout program, and they are very familiar with all the property, uh, the properties that we've submitted so far. And I think that they are very much behind buying out a lot of these properties on Three Mile Bridge Road and Cross Road, and maybe even one or two on Lower Sunny Brook. That one hasn't arrived yet, but I expect it to come by the next board meeting. They seem to have the money. They seem to think they, they did not recommend the Putnamville one that you guys approved because they still thought it would go into another program. And those homeowners have since written me and said they're going to withdraw their buyout because they're, they don't for a variety of reasons. So we're left with basically Cross Road and Three Mile Bridge Road. There is one guy who owns a camp in the middle of state property at the bottom of Shady Road, where the where the where the Shady Road Park, where it's supposed to be a spillway. Basically, it's supposed to grab all the water that comes down from Patterson Creek or even backs up from the reservoir. It's really not supposed to be lived in. And my suggestion to him has been to contact the state because I don't think the town wants to own a teeny weeny little bit of town land right in the middle of the state. But if you want it, you can. I mean, it's, it's just. No. So then my next question is, um, so if FEMA buys out, is there a typical formula they use? Is it based on the assessed value? Okay. Yes. What we'll, we will do is we will hire, uh, we, the town, will set up for bid. Um, an appraiser to come in, a professional appraiser to use information to come up with the July 9th value of each one of these homes. Okay. And is it typical that they, that they actually use that value to determine how much they're actually going to pay out, or it's like, we'll pay out 50% of that amount, or they in, actually... In my experience, they have usually done what the appraiser has done. Okay. So then, my final question is, Based on your experience having done a buyout, or two, or two, or if there are 14, is that even possible for you to help That's manage that? That's a very that? good question, Liz. We have been in contact, I have been in talks with the state taking this over. Since it's going to be a strip of land, asking if maybe the state can take these buyouts, and instead of that being town land with a, with a town easement on it, that the state takes the land and they puts a state easement on it. And if so, they would do the buyouts. It would be something that we continue to talk about. So there's a possibility, because otherwise that makes it almost 
like you would need assistance. You could not do this on your own and do all your other town meeting or town duties. I am not eager to do that, but I but I know this, the state under, the state's had enough familiarity with me, and they know how much I hate these things that they they completely understand that I don't as personally want to administer them, and they are looking at this alternative model. Interesting. Okay, good. that's cool. Good. That's good. So okay. So we need vote. So put that in the minutes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will. I thought we just did. No. Okay. No. Uh, you had additional you questions. Did. Oh, we we moved didn't second and did not vote. The oh, we didn't vote. The motion has been moved. Okay, so I'll vote in favor. Any opposed? Okay, done. Okay, great. Orders, we're going to sign the orders. Um, we do have uh, correspondence. We have correspondence and also uh, I have my dog. You have your Gold Park thing and I have my dog. Yep. Thing. And yep. I've got one more thing that I'm going to add. Thing while you're all okay, go ahead. I emailed everybody a copy of RB Technology Quote yeah, to do email. I don't know what you want me to do, but I thought it was just a slight bit high. <laughs> Did you read it? So I didn't see it turned. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. How much is it? Over 10000 Yeah, it's like 14000 or something. Yeah, to change our email over to Office 365. That seems like a lot of money. I just it's an just unbelievable like, amount of money. Everything we do with them is an unbelievable amount of money. I love listening to their ad on WDB <laughs> around seven in the morning. I don't think, but to be honest, you guys, I don't think it's it's out of like scope of what other um, companies would do. Now, what like Lowry had mentioned to me was like sometimes companies will take you on. And then they raise their prices later, right? They give you sort of a discount in the beginning, and then they raise their prices. And he does other municipalities, and I and I don't think he's you know grossly unreasonable. You know, he has employees and benefits and rent and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I just think that. Well, we already awesome. own the program. This literally is just to me, and I'm not an IT person, but I just think it's remapping. You know, from one to another, you know, from one host to a different host. I mean, and I don't see how that incurs. So it's we're, a $10,000 All, our, code, uh, all our computers and everything are on Office 365. We upgraded everything to right, Office 365. That. So why? How can it cost a $9,800 90, charge for the services? The software, the products basically are, you know, six hundred dollars. Um, not uh, five hundred dollars, and then there's a hundred and fifty-eight dollar monthly service yeah. to it. But ninety-eight hundred dollars well, we to transition it was gonna that, be that, that over. Monthly I mean, charge. It was fourteen dollars a mailbox or something like that. That we were aware of. I mean, they're basically saying that it's going to take 73 hours to to transition that over at the $135 an hour billing rate. That's like two weeks. Right. <laughs> How can that possibly be? How can I, it, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. I mean... I, Does it take all day to do one person? Did you talk no. to them? Did I talk to them? No. Did anybody talk? Is there somebody that would talk to them? I think we should have them come to a meeting. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I, I don't understand why it's that much. I mean, it seems like a crazy number to me. Yeah, I, I do. I agree with you. And I, don't un right. I do not, un I truly do not understand exactly what they have to do and how it takes that much time. And maybe it's just like we don't understand it, but it sure as hell seems like a lot of money to me. Well, wasn't to put in a server 20000 and yet to do the email is 10000 I. I to me, that seems ridiculous. But I just, I, that's why I sent it to you because it doesn't I'm say, not telling him. Does it say, is it says in there how many hours, Randy? No, it just says services subtotal. They and break I it all out. I took that subtotal and divided that by the $135 that I believe is in our contract to pay for that service. Yep. And that's how I backed into the hours. Why don't we send him an email at the very least rather than having him come and just say, can you please explain the cost of the service? Well, it's in there how we broke it all out. 
it's all in that thing of what his different levels are. Of this, it's so many hours for this, it's so many hours for that, it's so many hours for this. It was all broken out in the email. Yeah, so it's, the big part of it is the migration, 36 hours, he's basically saying. And it was $130.50 is what the hourly rate is here. Um, and then there's a fixed fee for security review of $400. Because he's also migrating all of our Gmail, all of our emails too, like, right? He's taking everything yeah. that's ever been I, sent I'd to I'd like us. to ask somebody in the, in the field, like, like just for a gut check. <laughs> Kurt. Yeah, just yeah, to say. That's not a bad idea. How many how many users do we have? I think they figured like four. I had to send a list to them. I can get you the list I sent to them. I think there's like fourteen yeah, mailboxes. Yeah, I think that that sounds right. Okay, so that makes that makes sense because it looks like there's fourteen licenses to this yeah, uh, sky there you go. full suite. Okay. So it is like, but it's doing, every, you know, it's taking everything over in our historical archives too, right. I would guess. Yeah. yeah, but that's gotta be just copying a file. Yeah. Even I it takes think. time. I think it's- I'll, the, I'll reach out and ask there. a couple okay, of Okay, well let's, let's do that and, and defer a decision on this until- uh, Just to see if that, if, if it raises major right. flags with them. Right, because I just don't know enough to know whether that's what it should be or not. The other question is, we do we have money in our budget to do that? Well, no. we budgeted, so we budgeted 20000 for the server. this server. So I would just, because we put that on hold, I would just take it out of that line yeah. item. Okay. Okay. Well, let's remember to talk about we that. I'll follow right up. Town. This, uh, in between this meeting and that, because I'll ask that question. Okay. Real money. That's real money you're running down. The, uh, the company we deal with, RB Technologies. Okay, so correspondent. So, Sarah, you want me to sign uh, sub grantees authorized just agent? For, yeah, just to, if you want to do it later, you can, but just for it's keeping you up. Oh. All right. Okay, so we have correspondence from. Blanche LaForce. La and uh, you all got a copy of it? I did, yeah. Um, should we read it aloud? I think probably we should. Who, who Can you is read Blanche? It? I will. Uh, Her mother. It's your mother. Oh. On, to the Town of Middlesex Select Board. On September 18th, I'd like to know why Steve Martin talk about being around 45 years about Mead Road while I tried to tell Peter I was here since 1963. All he said, it didn't matter. I don't think that was right. When Liz told Evelyn put her phone on mute, I already heard Zach ask if Steve Martin was there. I guess it doesn't matter what people say, only certain ones. It looks like it was already set up between Vic and Steve and Zach. When Vic said, it was okay to spin and dig up on people's grass. That wasn't uh, called for. He should not be on the select board. I hope people think twice before they vote for the select board. Blanche LaForce, Notch Road, Middlesex. LaForce. So the only comment I have to that, and she misunderstood what I said to her, I was trying to explain that it really didn't matter in terms of our decision-making process where the road was 40 or 60 or 80 years ago. What mattered was where the road is now. And I know that's a difficult concept for people to get their arms around, and I regret that she misunderstood that. But... Um, was this, I'm sorry, was this at a meeting or was this on this the road? This is when we after we went to Mead Road, that meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, obviously, she isn't happy. Um, I got to get off the board. Uh, well, what? So, can I ask a couple of questions? What was the question you. I know you were upset, and, and I'm sorry this whole thing happened. I really am. I didn't want to worry about it. What was the question Steve asked me? Uh, it was about. I know we had talked. And it had been mentioned about him spinning the tires. I thought it was across the road from his house. 
I think it was, I think, I think well, they- Well, let Steve I, answer them. The question is okay. Steve. So it was, it was I, I asked you specifically if it would be all right based on your response if I just showed up, planted my truck in the middle of the right of way on your property and tore it up right down to the dirt. And you said, sure. It, it, well, it has happened. And it, it has happened to me. And and somebody and where it, somebody where somebody went out of their way to maliciously tear up your grass. Mark Cody, Bowen Cody, yes, he did. Spun a donut right on my lawn. Yeah. So now, you know, I have a, you know, I, I, and I should probably not have brought that up, but that's what popped in my head. But also, you you know this, uh, and I think I did say I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I think I did say that I wouldn't just so to approve that, but it's it's like uh, uh, I can't think it. I can't. I don't really want to mention names, but there's some roads that people, you know, they put the they put the stones out right on the edge, but it's actually in the right of way, and people go down through and spin that up. Uh, there's another one on the other end of town that say do that, so it does happen. But is it is it kind? No, no, I didn't I didn't mean that at all. Go ahead, well, Peter. I I just don't know what our response to this no, should, should be. Should we acknowledge? Speech. Should we acknowledge that we've we've uh, read her letter and concerns into our uh, into our minutes? I don't know. Should Shelley we respond has her to hands the letter? Has I had asked her not not to come at least for a couple of weeks because it, it affected her health. She felt disrespected. She felt disappointed from the select board, but if I can just put on record, you've got to be careful validating that somebody can vandalize somebody's property because that gives them permission to do that. And that's what happened right after when you say something like that. And I've looked in all the state, I've, I've talked, to, I'm waiting for the municipalities, the Secretary of State to call me back because I don't find it anywhere where you can take a town right away or the town has access to do any changes or repairs and damage someone's property. I don't find where you can and I don't find where you can. And I tell you, if I don't find it, I will work my way up to the channel in the state, so that's changed. Because no one should be able to no, hurt it, somebody else's property. Well, or town property for that matter. I'm not talking by mistake, I'm talking intentionally in any case. I mean I know I wouldn't do it technically. Well they should make it I mean you know, and I, you know I, if, it's the, if it's in the if it's in the if it's in the town right away, absolutely they shouldn't be able to do it. No. I mean whether they're tearing up whether they're whether they're driving around in mud season and ripping and ripping and tearing up the town right. roads or whatever it's they do, it's very can't, difficult. You can't do it to someone's private property, and that's still your property, even though the town has access. But it's still your property. Well, and that's what I'm saying. I don't think that. And, and putting it out there says, "Yay, let's put up the balloons. Let's start doing it tomorrow." It, it is. Just, it is it, not just very, the town has. The, you're a little confused about that, I think. So it is a it is a town right, right of way. Yeah. So yes, it is your property, but the town actually controls that right of way. Correct. And the town is not going to allow someone to destroy it just like you want no. someone to destroy it. No. Yes, Randy. I don't want to rehash the whole no, the whole yes. thing, but I I think it's important to step back to the same thing we tried to distinguish in the last meeting, that there is a clear difference between the roadway and the right of way. Yes. I just right. I think that we should all just acknowledge that and and the comments brought up here. I'd have to go back and look at the video to see exactly what was said to see if it was the roadway or right of way because I do believe there's a clear difference between yeah. the, those two and what is allowable or what we can not what's allowable but what what we can do something about and what we can't do something about. So um, I just want to make sure that people have that clear distinction between the two because one is not the other. Exactly. But I guess what, what I'm thinking is you're right. I agree with you. It's not, it's, it, and I wouldn't do it. But what, what do I do or what does the town do? Okay, so the road's 10 feet wide. Say 11, I don't care. So that gives you out to 24. That gives you, uh, yeah, 24, that gives you another 13 feet. So if a guy pulls over, goes up around, uh, comes up or down around my butt, 
and spins his tires up, throws mud all over, makes a mess. How do we enforce that? How do you enforce that? If you know who it is, I suppose, I don't know. Go ahead, Steve. So as far as enforcing that, the town literally has state legislation on your side and you can impose a fine. Yeah, you we can, can, impose we can issue fees. a ticket. You can impose the town lawyer cost. You can do literally anything you want to get the money out of that person that the law allows you to do, which is one hundred to one thousand dollars per instance. I understand that's the legal. So that's part. what the town does. They follow the law and enforce it the way the law instructs them to. I understand in theory what you're saying, and I don't really want to beleaguer this point much. But I don't see how, if I get up the next tomorrow morning. And, and even if I don't, you're saying you've seen somebody do it. You know who it is? Yep. But isn't it it's your word against his word? I mean, if you want to take a picture, if you want to do that, then, hey, go ahead. Bring it in. And I guess, uh, I guess the, the select board as a whole will decide whether they want to prosecute him or not. They don't get to decide because the law says they have to. Right. So it's, it's not a decision the select board gets to make. Uh, I'm not sure that's correct. No, I'll send you the legislation tonight. Our, uh, it doesn't, I, I'm wondering though if it's something that we have to do or that we have the power to do. That's exactly yes. it, yeah. Do you get to not follow state law? Is that a choice? No, but like, so I'm just, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like I see people um, during mud season, they love to come up Culver Hill Road with their trucks and literally like spin their wheels and make it that much worse for our town to repair the roads, right? Like well, they, it's like they're, they're deliberately doing the it for road. the residents, for the town. It's like they're deliberately doing it. Like, I guess I could track them down, right? But I don't think I am required as a select board member to find them for doing that. Maybe I am, but I, I don't know. I think we have Are the you discretion. Saying I, I think we have Under the discretion. Under the Good Citizen Act at the federal level, technically, yeah, because they're doing harm intentionally to the community or to an individual. That is an actual federal law that we're all supposed to follow. Hmm. Well, I suppose it might be a good question for the week. Well, that, that's for a well it's no different. It, it, it's, you know, if someone is intentionally damaging the right of way or the roadway, the bottom line, I believe it's within our purview to find them. I agree with you on that, Steve. You know, we have never in all the years done anything like this. So this is new ground for us. That's We're going right. to start issuing yeah. tickets. So we haven't issued tickets for dog things. We haven't issued tickets for junkyard ordinances and whatever. And, you know, when it's it makes it particularly tricky when it's when it's neighbors who are having a having a fight. And I don't know. I mean, we'd have to, Steve, if, if you have real proof, if you have videos, if you have photos, if you have whatever proof that that a particular person actually do this and you bring us to that, bring it to us, you'll force us to make a decision. But until that until that happens, uh, you know, we're the answer is we're going to follow the law. But I don't believe the law says we have to issue a ticket. I'm not aware that that is true. If it is true, that's news to me. Well, the next step would be, though, Steve, if you think about it, wouldn't it be uh, so So I come down here and I'd say, geez, my, my corner is getting ripped up all the time. I want the town to get somebody to sit there and find out who that is and so that we can find them. We have We're no not ability going to, do, to that. do that. We have no ability to do that, Victor. Right. I, we don't I'm have just, a town constable. We don't say. have a town police force. That's what I'm trying to say. We have no ability to enforce it. I don't. I'm not saying that you're wrong. That 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 it's uh, it it may be the law, but I don't think we. You know, I don't think that we have the wherefore to uh, or or to uh, to enforce it. Well, you got a town lawyer, don't you? Yes. Um, <laughs> But I, 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 look, 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 look. Let's just, let's just back up. And I, I really don't want to talk about this at any great length tonight. If you want to file a complaint with the town and you have proof that this has happened, not just your word against somebody else's word, 
bring it to us and, and we'll consider it. Yes, Randy. Uh, just one last thing. Um, no, one more. You got another one. Okay. Sam? Samantha has a question. Uh, yeah. So I guess the thing that I just want to bring out is we just thought we came to a resolution on this in the last meeting as far as clearing up you know the boundaries and having people say that they would over, you know kind of abide by what came out of that and i'm hoping that things would settle down after the last meeting and maybe they won't i i don't know this um uh, i think if i was in your shoes i would be extremely frustrated as well um i would just ask that maybe we give it a chance to see if it really does settle down and those types of actions subside based on mm -hmm. the course of action that's, that's happened over the last month with the site visit and, and the discussions and maybe they won't i i don't know um it's got to be extremely frustrating for both parties um going through so i think that's that's all I want to say is, is hopefully maybe the dust settles and, and the actions stop. Samantha had a question over here. I'm sorry. Yes. I just wanted to bring it back to the letter, the initial conversation piece. Um, just with talking to my grandmother after this, because so part of the reason why she was frustrated is when you guys were on site. And I didn't see this, or I would have brought this up that day. But apparently what she had told me was she tried to talk to you and you cut her off and you didn't let her finish when she was saying that how long she had been in the area. And I think what affected her so much is you didn't do the same thing to Steve Martin when he had brought it up. So I wanted to. Well, if that, that I mean, uh, you know, first of all, a, you know, that was a challenging situation down there in a rainstorm. We were trying to move ahead. If I somehow, if she believes that I disrespected her, I will apologize to her if, if that will make her feel better. I certainly did not mean that. I was trying to make the point to the group, not just to her, that where the road was historically was not really germane in determining where the road is today. And, you know, the state law is clear on that, that the road is where the road is. It doesn't matter where it was 60 years ago. So that's all I was trying to say. And she misunderstood or I cut her off. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Um, and I guess the question is, uh, you know, as a board, how do we choose? Do we, do we write a letter in response to this to her? Do we or a response? I think we do. I think we guys can call her here. I'm happy to call her. Yeah. Well, what, for, I think, I mean, obviously, your people are still upset. But my question is, we met there last week, uh, two weeks ago, right? Yep. Has anything happened in the last two weeks? Uh, I don't mean to point my finger, sir. Has anything happened in the last two weeks uh, that, that, that's, that, that your property's been torn up in, in the right way? Or are you talking about something that happened before where you, where you could see the tire marks over there? So this was about the letter. Like, this was about a letter that my grandmother sent to the town a while ago. So, like, we're not coming here bringing it up again. No, we weren't. It's a letter that my grandmother had sent. I told her write it and burn it. So I didn't look at it. So you get upset, you write something, burn it. Because no one wants to send it to the town. She's 88 years old. It's, she got a well, would, it, would, it, would it calm her down for me to call and try and explain that to her, or is that just going to infuriate her more? Should I try and come over and meet? I mean, I'll, why, don't you say, why don't you just call her up and just say, hey, she would like to hear, I mean, I, I would like to hear someone nicely call me up and say, I'm sorry I saw your letter and I didn't listen to what you said, and... Um, tell me more about how long you've lived on Notch Road. Well, it, I think it could be as simple as there was no disrespect meant. Yes. I apologize for that because clearly she felt disrespected. Right. And I think that's enough. If, if I was the person to write this letter, a simple phone call that said there was no disrespect intended would be, would be and enough. And I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 
I don't think you need to rehash the incident. No, I think it's I think it's just a, an acknowledgement that you you hear what she's so saying. And and uh, and I think okay. this is a good yeah, opportunity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think this is a good opportunity for us to remember that we as a board are here to serve the public and to listen to the public and make the public feel welcome at these meetings. Because sometimes we can be wanting to get through the agenda and not make people feel welcome at the meetings. So this is an opportunity for us to remember that sometimes our meetings might go longer because people want to talk or people want to say something. Um, and just to, before we interrupt someone or tell them to stop talking, that we think for a moment before we do that. I have. I have given this lecture before, and I just think this is another great opportunity. All I would say on my behalf about that is I absolutely try to do that. And sometimes, especially when that was a situation, I had multiple people talking at me at the, at the same time, it was very difficult to manage down there, is all I'm saying. And I, I will call her up and very sincerely apologize to her, and hopefully that makes her feel better. And I'm sure you guys will find out if it doesn't make her feel better. Maybe I, I will. Yeah, okay. Okay, all right. Okay. And is a phone call good enough, or should we do a letter? What would no, she like? I think the phone call I will be fine. I appreciate that. I don't think okay. she's expecting no, okay. okay, all right, good. We like having good, her good, at the good. meetings, just so, so you know. So, yes. <laughs> and, I, and if coming to our meetings upsets her, I, I feel badly about that. Um, so I actually do have a Welch Park report, believe it or not. So here it is, short and sweet. I gave it to Riley with both barrels. I said, John, I'm really frustrated. I call you, now you don't return my phone calls, whatever, what's up? He said, Peter, I am completely overwhelmed. There's no way I can do this project. And I said, well, I wish you told me that six months ago, John. But at least you're being honest with me now, and I pre and I consider him a friend. He's a good guy. I mean, it was not an easy, easy conversation. But what I said is, um, we're going to go ahead and make other plans. Do you have anybody you would recommend to handle this? And he said, No, I really don't have anybody. So uh, Carl and I, Carl Balin and I talked about this. Carl Balin has talked to uh, Olson Associates up in Stowe. They do a lot of uh, this kind of work. And she is willing to rewrite the agreement, which is one step in this. What she strongly suggested is that we reach out to uh, Grenier and Associates, Charlie Grenier, and have him deal with the Act 250 piece of this, which apparently he does a lot of, a lot of all the time, and he has good relations with the Act 250 people. So I don't know what the cost of this is. I'm going to get some kind of at least rough estimate of what the cost is. But my recommendation is if this can work, and Carl is also going to reach out to, uh, to uh, Matt Oates, who is the Benderson person, and make sure he's in agreement with us. But my feeling is we, move to, we need to move forward. She didn't seem to think rewriting it was a big deal. I don't know what that means in terms of money. But certainly there was going to be a cost associated with having uh, John Riley do it. So uh, what I would like to do is get a little more information and come back next time and say, do you agree that this is the way to go forward? And hopefully at the same time, Matt Oates will agree, and then we can, uh, then we can do it. But uh, at least John Riley was honest and said what I think we'd already figured out, that he just doesn't have the capacity to do it. And the other thing with Olson and Associates, which is, a potential part of this in terms of the cost is they have paralegals and associates who would undoubtedly do a lot of this work. So we wouldn't be paying paying the lawyers. John Riley is like a one-man show. So whatever he did, he would be billing us by the hour at his hourly rate. Okay. Does that make does that make sense? Um, at least it'll get us moving finally get us moving forward on this. Sure. And the my only other question does anybody have anyone else who they think would be a good person to do this? Carl came up with Carl came up with Olson Associates. I do not know them, but he does. Anyone else? Hey, Sarah, I'm sure you're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs>
good handle on it. No, only real estate lawyers. Oh. So can I just bring up the dog thing unless you're done? Did you yes. Know? That's I just need it for my Welch Park board. Okay. I just need authorization from the board to allow me to send letters to at least one owners. We have uh, owners of dogs at 174 East Mile, uh, East Hill Road. Who these dogs continue to go out on the road and harass people. It's getting to the point where people on East Hill are actually calling the Vermont State Police. And um, I went out of my day on Saturday to, this, to these people and put a note in the door and told them it's got to stop and to call me. They haven't called me. I've emailed them. I've contacted them. I've called them and they haven't done anything. It's got to stop. It's just, you know, it's one thing for dogs to go on the road. I have an owner who had dog that lived in the road, but it's another for dogs to harass these, these guys. And Erica has been an ongoing problem with her for her, and she needs some teeth. So if you can, can uh, authorize it, that's great. We also have dogs on French Road who I'm sure tracked down a fawn and killed it uh, on French Road and ate it as it was mm -hmm. alive. Um, and I don't know who owns those dogs on French Road. If anybody knows them, please come forward. But they also need letters. These dogs are not only unlicensed, they're unregistered. I don't know if they've had rabies shots. It's bad. It's where bad. do you think they live? I don't know where the, the owners on French Road live. I know exactly where the owners on East Hill Road live. So. And in fact, you left a note for them that didn't respond That's to your note. Right? Yeah, I left yeah. a note in the door and they didn't respond. And Liz Fortman went over there on Saturday and spoke to one of the owners. She's dealt with him before and nothing has happened. And I emailed these people. I don't know what else we can so, do. So the only question I have about that is, as you, as you threaten in your letter, do we take the dogs? I mean, they haven't responded. What good's another letter going to well, do? Well, we have a problem with the dog taking. And the problem with dog taking is the effect of the flood on um, the shelter. The shelter, space. yep. So I can search around, but I think that- Can we I, issue them a ticket? I guess we can issue them a ticket. I think that they have, I think if you allow me to, at least for the people on 174 East Hill Road, you give us a, a deadline, you pick the day, you know, was it one week, two weeks to get the rabies, the rabies certificates in and the, um, and, and the Well, you, need to, you, you spelled it out in your email. You need to right. restrain your dog, you need to get them rabies vaccinated people? and you need to get them registered. I, I guess, you know, the, the, it's not just one person on East Hill Road who's complaining about this. It's another. I think they're very threatening. I think they're kind of in dog mode. With right near there, we had a really bad dog incident. Oh, I remember. Ago. Do they know they could be sued? What are they doing? Chasing cars? Chasing people? Chasing human beings and bikers, like like oh. people walking and biking. So what I would tell you, and I go by those dogs all the time. You do. Okay, okay. mostly yeah, in my car. Okay. The brown. Hound, he's some kind of a hound dog. I don't know what he is, but he's some kind of a hound dog. He lies there at the end of the driveway all day long. All day long. Waiting. Waiting for his master to come home, I presume. But I have never seen, and I've seen people walk by, I've seen all kinds of stuff. I have never seen that dog go after anybody or any other dog. He's, when I go by and I've walked by a couple of times, he's very peaceful. He just lies there. Well, maybe but, so. Obviously, there's something going on there, and he's definitely there. He's there. Well, you've seen him, Victor, all the time. I'll vouch for you. I got out of my car the other day and went over and petted him. Wait, is there a pack? Once you have two, though, it's a that's, pack. That's Liz's. That's, you're absolutely right. Okay, that's well, here you go. So here's the question. The first time I have seen the German Shepherd there, who is the other dog, or the, I'm not sure if he's a purebred German Shepherd, but he looks like a German Shepherd, right. was in the last few days. I did see the other dog there. Yeah. Well, according to Erica, this has been an ongoing problem. There was, there, she responded once when their dog was hit a couple of years ago um, when, it, when, it was, when it got into a porcupine. She helped him, and then that dog was the same one that went to the road and was killed. So uh, I guess all I'm asking, I mean, these people, if, they, if their dog were licensed or if their dog, if I had a rabies certificate, I would feel a lot better about this. At least I would have some knowledge. But... These people are blowing me off about a rabies certificate, and now we're in a now we're in a health issue. I don't know if these dogs have been vaccinated or not. I don't know what to tell people if they do bite. Who who is responsible for um, collecting the dogs if we were to do that? Is that Erica or is that yeah. probably? Well, you know, ultimately, what we're all talking about here is we don't have a constable. Yeah, and a right. constable is an impossible thing to have. You have to have basically a full time police mm -hmm. officer who is willing to work every few hours um, a, a year. And those are the people who would deliver tickets, and those are the person who would accompany Erica to deliver something like this, like a ticket. But, you know, 
yeah, I suppose we would just, we would have to start, execute some sort of authority. I haven't done it yet, but right, I would like to start off with a scary letter. If you just let me. Yeah. I thought that email was plenty scary enough, but you didn't give them a, you didn't give them a Let's deadline. Let's get them a letter that they have to sign. Return. Um, but certified. Certified. Yes. Yeah, okay. I would include what the Vermont State Legislation says you can do to a dog in self-defense in fear of your own life in that letter, word for word the way it's written in the legislation. That, that doesn't get if that doesn't get their attention. Nothing will. Oh, may I address that? I'm sorry. What? I said may I address that? Yeah. With all due respect, I don't want anybody shooting anybody else's dogs. We're not. I, I think that's something we're going to try to avoid, Steve. You get a dog running at me, and I think it's going to attack. Okay, but we're we're not incur we're not saying. Do you watch out the town of Middlesex? You can come to the road, and that person can shoot your dog. I just don't think we're going to go there. I think what we're going to say is that well, we here's the dog ordinance, here's the statute, these are the penalties, so this is the enforcement have power we let's, have. Let's give them one week. Okay. One week from. But then what do we do, guys? Here we go. They're... Okay, they're not, let's say they don't do anything in one week. We then hire the police to accompany Erica to seize the dogs. Yeah. Washington County. There's Sheriff. no place to take them. Well, they they will take them in the shelter because oh, they'll, right find, they'll, they'll find, find we'll spot. find some place to take them. We'll put them in Vic's backyard. Yeah. <laughs> that little brown, my, that little bring them to my bring them nice. over to my house. I'll put invisible fence collars on them. I don't they know. We'll be take going them to a place that didn't. We'll take them to the place. That's that right. Fly. I still have my invisible fence. Well, these people actually own an invisible fence as well. They just didn't install it. How do you know? That's what Erica told me. <laughs> this has been an ongoing problem. I wouldn't bring it to you if it weren't an ongoing problem. Well, they probably don't care that much about their pets, which is why they're not doing anything. So, I just, I just want to say again, and I, I, I just want to be a little careful because that care. dog at the end of the road is very sweet. <laughs> he is. You said you petted him. <laughs> I know. All I know is I'm getting. I'm I like dogs. I don't want to be shot. I don't want to be shooting you? dogs. I'm just gonna do. I, they're your neighbors. I'm gonna say everybody call Peter Hood. Walk down the street. Go knock on his. So I don't have to do this on a Saturday. Okay, so I, the I understand you're frustrated, Sarah. What's the plan? Let's send the letter and see what happens, and hopefully, right, they, like hopefully they respond. We had, but a, we had, we had an owner, a dog owner on Wood Road, and she we a problem. We sent her, we sent her some scary letters. I remember that. Right, and that's went to do the trick. Her. Right, and maybe fet, fines and penalties will also do the trick. Who knows? Something like that. Yeah. And if it doesn't, I'll see you next week. And I'd be happy to um, accompany Erica if necessary. Oh, that's very kind. Me too. Oh, well, well, you're I mean, I'm right down the street. Victor and, I can, Victor and I can come in from both sides. <laughs> Peter can stand there and pet the dog. <laughs> Victor, take it home. Okay. Is that enough for you? That's all I need. Okay. I just needed that you give this a slight more. So we need okay. to make a motion that we give you the permission to do that? Yes, yeah, we should. I haven't warned it. Yeah. Okay. I haven't warned it. You're not, all we're doing is you're authorizing me to execute that, to yeah, I think the letter. I think it's that's no fine. formal act. All right, so are we cancel, are we um, closing out the meeting? Yeah, we need to well, sign orders. Well, we've got to sign orders. Oh. Are you going to adjourn the meeting? Yes. Thank you for your time and attention. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> when you sign the orders, your meeting is adjourned. Well, no sometimes more it order. takes me a while. Well, do you want to come down tomorrow and do it? No. <laughs> I need a plan. Uh, so what are you guys going to do for Halloween?